It's the John and Ken Show. John Cobell from Ken Shampoo. What a way to make a living. This week, we're in downtown Los Angeles. What street are we on? I didn't even look. First in Maine is First. where we're standing. Uh, right near City Hall. In fact, we're just across the street from exactly 534 Occupy LA tents. And now, uh, we're going to go visit them soon. Yeah, this is our first look at the scene here. I mean, where we are, we're looking behind City Hall, where we can see what we were told was the first encampment on the hill here, John, behind the hall. Oh, kind this... of expanded out that way. Of course, the news, the Occupy movements are in the news big this week because of the possibilities that some cities are saying enough, it's time to move on, as Oakland did, San Francisco threatened to do, Atlanta was doing. Here in L.A., the news just came out last night that Mayor Villaraigosa was saying that this cannot continue indefinitely, which is a is strong hint that they've got to move. Now, what he's claiming is he's going to look for a, a new location. We're going to bring Shannon Ferrin on here to talk to I, us. i got to say, the tents are uh, beautifully colored and uh, arranged. Uh, they're all close together. I didn't expect that. They're like row oh, houses. Yeah. There's not a lot of room yeah, here no, for hundreds of, of people to camp you, out. You can hear whatever's going on in the next tent. Right. Have you been here today walking around, Shannon? The people are not happy with the mayor. They say that they are not happy with his fake support. You'll remember he uh, came out here early on. He gave, gave out him ponchos. Some ponchos, blankets, if you will. And yesterday he said, you know what? This is this cannot go on forever. Underneath all those uh, those tents, you guys, You'll see the grass is just rotted. I mean, it's just brown. Yeah, what else? And so, and then beyond there, you see over the tents, that's where the porta potty bank is. Uh -oh. I recommend, I've been out here a couple days. I mean, not staying here. <laughs> yeah, but, you haven't done it overnight yet, have you? No. Well, but that's when the good woman, stuff you happens. You've got to stay overnight. And oh, get the good you didn't yeah. randomly open a porta potty like Steve no, Gregory Steve did. Steve Gregory did that. Yeah, the, I know. He, he was here on the weekend. Yeah, so he he's came got at night questions. Too. To and answer. you heard what he found, right? Yes, I did hear yeah, what he found. Everybody knows that. Well, he said that he wanted to tell you guys that he went into one of the porta potties here and that's why he did it so oh. i blame you for his traumatic experience if you didn't hear he uh, found two guys uh, one sitting one standing uh one smoking a joint and the other smoking something else and now, one guy was on the pot yeah right <laughs> you not be characterizing the movement as just those two guys in the porta potty now I, we, we've never really been here or have it in years was this lawn really beautiful before it was oh yeah oh, oh, it was yeah, beautiful. very pretty because they're claiming these trees and now that i see it there's a lot of trees here that these trees are in danger too they're not getting watered oh. i don't think the trees are in danger well that's what they said yesterday in part of their statement it wasn't just there's the, lawn, the first the aid tent keep that in mind okay and that's that's their, important that's well, the I, occupy people's tent yes Oh, yes, very, there's uh, a group over on the other lawn here to the right on the other side of City Hall. That's where the peacekeepers live. Those are the people who like to keep the peace here uh -huh. so that they don't sound like a bunch of crazy, violent people. Has oh, there so been uh, periods of unpeace? There have been some unpeaceful things that have gone on, and that's why they form the peacekeepers. Uh huh. So group. they move in like the it's UN. It's kind of like the Renaissance Fair. But there's like a tent for first aid. <laughs> yeah. There's like an artist tent. There's a tent where they make t-shirts right here in the front. I see. Oh. Where, where's the condom and syringe tent? I, I, I haven't looked. <laughs> I have not found that. that. The general I assembly. Have not gone looking. The general assembly is their government. Do they have a tent where their government meets or something like oh, a I parliament see that. tent? I want to see that. Because I know no. that's where they draft uh, all their ideas <laughs> their, and stuff. Their government tent. No, no, no. Because you know, I wondered what they do all day. I mean, I don't want to sound. I don't know, cynical, but what do they well, do all as day? You can I hear see, people making speeches. Yeah, you see that guy right there on the top of the steps? Yeah. Uh, he's got uh, he's got an audience right now. They, they have several speakers come in and say their piece throughout the day. They've got bands that come and play to occupy the time. Uh -huh. A lot of sleeping. If you come yeah. here before 11.30 a.m., not <laughs> a lot a guy of right there. about. Yeah, there's a guy right there oh, on the hill. Oh, yeah, that's the suntan hill. Oh, the That's where you yeah. lay out for your tan. Yeah, he's, he's losing the sun there, What's but he's What's with trying. his legs? His legs look a little dirty to me, don't they? Well, there are no showers here, John. Oh, it's not right? the Ritz. Uh, <laughs> no, they, uh, washing no is an issue. Oh, uh, that's great. Can uh, we just yeah. stay here on the sidewalk across the street? I don't know. Ken wants to get in there. Huh? Yeah. No, we're eventually going to walk through. This has yeah. been here about a month, Shannon, as you uh, A little over three weeks, yeah. A little over three weeks. And some people have been here from the beginning. Some just came last week. Some just come for hours a day or, or something. But there are people who have been camping here for three weeks. I heard something that there might have been a knife loose this morning, that uh, the cops had to come here and run through the Occupy camp because some there was word that somebody had a gun that had changed to a knife. Well, the LAPD has kept a steady presence here. I believe they have eight officers assigned. Somebody has a gun. 
It's yeah. going home. We're looking at a group right here on our sidewalk across the street of uh, LAPD uh, yeah. officers. Yeah. At least six there standing there just sort of watching over the thing. And how does that factor into taxpayer expense? In terms uh, of, yeah, I don't know how much overtime like is the going Jackson on Memorial. Here. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> how much extra money is this causing? Well, I want to go uh, and inspect all the uh, all the dying grass because they claim it's going to would cost forty five thousand dollars to replace the lawn after all these people are forced to move on. And There's China's also up. the smell of some grass in there if you walk through. Uh, is there? Yeah. Yes, uh, I've, I've heard that. Key. Yeah. Uh, and your understanding is the mayor would like them to move, not necessarily to disappear? He's directed his staff to uh, kind of look at other locations where this demonstration could move. And some of the people here say, hey, the only reason it's been relatively peaceful is because it's on City Hall lawn. If you move it, there are worries that it could get rowdy. Worries from people who are staying well, here. People are better behaved because they're on City Hall property. That's what some were saying today. Yeah, yeah. It might be. If you just go well, to any random uh, lot, right. you might have anarchy. Well, we're in this situation now where everybody's looking at what's happening in Oakland oh. and defiantly saying it's not going to happen to us, it's not going to happen here. Well, we're across the street from the LAPD, oh, too. If the cops bring up the tear gas, it's happening to them. So, you know, they could they could uh, talk all the... <laughs> they could muster up all the bravado they want. Uh, and then that tear gas wins. wins. Did you read the story about that disgusting encampment in San Francisco this morning? The police lined up like they were going to yeah. disperse, and then they didn't. They went away. Take them out? According to news reports in the Chronicle, the police gathered early this morning buses at Treasure Island, which is right across the yeah. bridge, and they were going to come over and just knock apart the encampment. It was a fake to see how much and, resistance they were going to And get. in the end, they didn't. Uh, they left them alone for another day there at the Embarcadero where there's reports of real hygiene problems. Uh, <laughs> what we want to do in the next segment, we will walk through the center of the encampment. And of course, we're going to talk to people who are involved oh, in yeah. the Occupy movement. There's but we want to get a sense of what it looks like, what it smells like. 534 no, tents. No, you don't. No, you no. don't. <laughs> get to pick one word to describe the aroma. What, what would it be? Well, I just can't think Two of words. a cross between no shower and pot. Because that's what it would be. Oh, pot and B.O. Uh, yeah, pot and B.O. Yeah, but you're not right. sticking your head in the tents, are you? No, I'm yeah. not Steve Gregory. Yeah, that right. <laughs> the porta potties in the tents is where you don't want to put your uh, uh, your nose. All right. Well, we'll we're gonna go uh, we're gonna go into the uh, tent city there in just a I guess next segment during the uh, commercial break we'll uh, we'll cross the street, and when we reappear in your radio we'll be among the tenters, and we'll see uh, 534 tents. There's got to be 534 stories out there, right? And I'm yeah. sure everyone is captivating. You know, I look at this and I can't believe, unless by the time we walk all the way through, there's really 500 tents. That's, that's uh, the official But she said the peacekeepers are on the other side. There must be something over there, too. This is yeah. the big city hall building or part of it. The all answer. right. I yeah. understand, too, Dennis Zine is coming by. Right? Dennis Zine is coming at 3.30? No? Just oh. on the phone? On the oh, phone. Oh, he's chicken? Where is Him, he? He's, where is he hiding? He's got to face the people here. Zine he's out of town, he Zine. says. Yeah, he's out of town. <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll, we'll make wiener. our way over to the encampment and see what we find among the Occupy he's L.A. people. The bald-headed wiener. We've decided to come here and look for ourselves, and it's a shame. Today's not the day they're going to break it up. It doesn't yeah, look like it. I know. That would have been great. We would have gotten tear-gassed, paint-balled. All right, when we come back, we'll be uh, in uh, Tent City there for Occupy L.A. Uh, John and Ken Show, KFI, AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. <laughs> John and Ken Show. John Cobell and Ken Shampo. We're inside Occupy LA on City Hall's lawn here in downtown Los Angeles. And we're walking down the main boulevard, I guess you'd uh, you'd call it. Right? It is. We've it is it. actually like a street on each side. Is uh, Kind of like a cobblestone uh, pathway? Or Stone tile pathway? It's <laughs> so one guy in a surgical mask. That might be a hint. Uh They're going to start yelling slogans at us. Okay, wow, there's a guy uh, in fatigues and no shirt. Well, uh, yeah, and one of, glove. Um, LA's homeless population is also in camp too. Right? Can I? T might be going out on a limb. I don't know. Should I try to talk to him? Imagine that we really got it together in providing housing for everyone. That is the beginning of the end of our problems. When nobody has a landlord, nobody is a slave to a system. Nobody should have a landlord. Nobody should have a landlord. Does that mean nobody should own property and rent it out to other people? No. Nobody should own property and rent it out to other people but be able to... Well, if it wasn't for landlords, where would all the people live if they couldn't afford a home? Well, uh, the Indians live without landlords. The people in the Amazons live without landlords. Everybody would live in a house if we... Own. Well, yeah, but you end up with a tent. No. You could have like a four-bedroom penthouse. No. If we all... 
this, we will all have a home and we will have a system where where housing has no value other than a residential value, no monetary value. No monetary value yes, to the homes. Housing should not be traded like a commodity. We should start a new way. Where'd you get this idea from? It's called, I call it the United World of Free and Clear. I The United World of Free and Clear. Yeah, and I got it from all the shenanigans that go in real estate, like repossessions. What's your name? My name is Juan Alcala, and they call me the dollhouse dude on the Internet. Okay. All right, so you believe in no uh, no property that can be to be. Okay. All right. That's our so, first sampling here at Occupy LA. So far, so good, you, you think? I've invited all Hold on. I'm by uh, another man here. Uh, not even being accosted in a negative way. Uh, 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 Timothy Dream Weaver. I'm a uh, candidate for District 15. And uh, I wanted to let you guys know that I had already invited most of these people, I think, that are here to our town hall meeting. They wanted to or figure something out or ask some questions or how, however they want to proceed. You want to bring them to a town hall meeting? Exactly. You should bring your uh, town hall here. I mean, they're all. That's where like, it is, sir. It's going to oh. be here. Oh, well, what time? Uh, we, we haven't come up with a time quite yet, but we are planning it for this. Yeah, week. You're running for uh, LA City Council District 15. For uh, District 15. Whose seat is that? Yes, sir. That's uh, uh, Ms. Janet Hans. Uh, Janice Hans' old seat. Oh, okay. I'll it's vote a very for important you. seat. I'll, I'll vote for you. I'll even move into the district <laughs> just to vote. For you. Okay. What we want to do is uh, have something like that where we can all come together. And uh, get our get our issues out there. All right, and, let's move uh, closer right, to the hill. Yeah, we got to move on. The transmission will be yeah, better. Our, our microphones are breaking up every once in a while. I was told the we, closer uh, we are to the hill, the closer better we, we are to the hill. Okay, yeah, the well, higher up we go. Let's go to the hill, or close to it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll tell you. I, you know what? If, if you want to talk, we have to talk on the hill or the microphones don't work. Right? Yeah, that's why we're just moving because of the All transmission right. troubles. So. Thank you for we are right now in the heart of Occupy LA in downtown Los Angeles. This, this is, is the uh, city Let hall. Oh, look at that. The city employee entrance only is at the top of these stairs. Oh, we're <laughs> so, I, yeah, that's right. Everybody's got to walk past the, uh, the encampment here on their way to work every morning. Well, these stairs are used for people to speak. There's a microphone at the top to give you an idea of the layout, and there's a, a number of tents on the hill. Sure enough, the lawn isn't looking good. I don't know what no. it looked like before, so no, I can't it's, really it's, speak. It's looking brown and ragged, and there's a lot of uh, dirt spots here. Um, I guess I guess uh, what we could do, could, maybe I'll just walk on the hill over here, right? I'll just swing my legs over the uh Don't the go guard, sliding down. Guardrail. Yeah, it's a steep hill. You want to wanna... visit somebody in a tent? I, I Actually, that's what I was going to go, like, uh, tent to tent and uh, knock on tent flaps. <laughs> and uh, hi there. Well, we got, got a cross section of uh, we got a woman wearing crop. a black scarf for interface. You're not doing any interviews. She's got a little baby. Oh, okay. All right. I'm just. I just asked. Hey, who are you? Richard. Richard, why are you here? Is, why Why are you here? Isn't it obvious? No. Okay. Um, anyone that says this uh, movement doesn't have a message uh, must be illiterate because there's thousands of signs around here. What's your message? My message is to take corporate money out of politics. My message is that decisions should be made in the interest of the people and not in the interest of money. The current economic system forces people to make decisions based on what's right, but based on what makes money. If you spill oil in Nigeria and it costs a billion dollars to clean it up, but you could pay 50 million out of that, that's what you have to do. That is the right business decision. So it does, if I raise my hand and say, this is the right thing to do for people, but it's not you fired. Um, why are you in L.A. and not in Washington or New York? Because all the bad guys who created the I chaos agree. are on the... And I'm curious uh, why you'd be outside uh, Mayor Villaraigosa's office. It seems you should be... Uh, back in Oakland, it's happening in the San Fernando Valley. It's happening in uh, Orange County, Irvine. It's happening in San Diego. So Right, but the people in City Hall here have... No responsibility for what happened and can't do anything about it. So it seems like you got to take your message to we're the not, people. We're not trying to get them to change things. This is a public space that we're we're reclaiming our right to assemble. We're taking no. back public space. We're not here to tell them to change. But uh, Chase owes California billions in property taxes, but they want to complain about forty thousand, whatever, a hundred thousand dollars about grass when they're owed billions in property taxes from Chase. 
Well, Why don't we focus on the big issue? Well, it doesn't give you the right to kill $40,000 worth of grass just not because Chase... This grass was brown when we got here. This grass does not grow in the shade. Like, you're focusing on something that's so so ridiculous. You want to talk about no, this no, grass? No, no, it's a real bill. I mean, when they have to reseed the lawn, it is And so, so is billions that Chase owes in property taxes from when they, they seized Washington Mutual. I know, Why but, don't we go after but them? But Chase isn't ruining the grass. This country's, this state is almost bankrupt, and they're owed billions. Well, why do you, why do you think it's bankrupt? They, 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 three things that, that's causing the bankruptcy. Well, I know, I know why you think it's bankrupt. Because all the illegals are spending everyone's money or, or using all the services, right? That's what you. That, think. That's that's one okay. factor. There's others. Well, someone that's born in the United States is not more special than someone that's born in Mexico. I hate to break it to you, but that's the truth. Well, it's a matter of how much we can afford. If somebody is brought here when they're when they're four years old. They how, about, no choice how about somebody who's not? How about, not? how about adults who just come illegally and end up costing us a lot of money? Is that fair to American kids? Is that fair there's to so American uh, citizens? There's so many different stories, and there's and there's there's people that no, were no, born but here. You're, that you're are evading bad. the question here. Right. Isn't there a sense of fairness that American taxpayers should get the money first for their families and their children and their health care? We were not invited here by the Native Americans. We were not invited here by the American Indians. But they we, didn't own it. They didn't have a formalized ownership. Yeah, well, I mean, it, offered, was, it, was, it was free land. Anybody who came got oh, it. Oh, sure, yeah, because they weren't good businessmen, right? When we offered, in 1854, we offered $150,000 to buy two point two. million. I don't think we're going to undo that deal. I mean, I'm just talking about the now. I'm talking about the now and that So you, you, you think the Native Americans should have been better businessmen, clever, right? Good. Probably right. better warriors. we got to uh, make we gotta some take money. A break. That, that, We're talking we got to do our corporate I mean, where, thing and uh, send that, it over to the news. All right, we got to take a... We are in Occupy L.A., our downtown Los Angeles, checking it out for ourselves. We'll be back with more on the John and Ken Show, KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. Here's Terry Ray Elmer with the news. John and Ken Show. John and Ken Shampoo. We're in, in front of City Hall, Occupy LA. A big crowd surrounding us. There, there's a lot of people who want to speak. So we've all agreed that in order for people to be heard here, uh, as one person speaks, the rest of you can't shout or chant, okay? Because otherwise the listeners can't hear the message of each individual. And we really do want to get as many of you on as possible because that's why we came here. Uh, we got Dennis Sign on. We're just going to talk to Dennis Sign, the LA City Councilman, briefly. Dennis, you there? I'm here. Dennis, what, what do you what do you make of the, the protest here? Because uh, the mayor says everybody's got to go soon. Well, they do have to go soon. I don't know when soon's going to be, but we don't want to have a confrontation like they had in Oakland or Washington or New York. What we want to do is end this peacefully. Basically, what they're trying to do is bring attention to the fact that we have a problem with the economy, a problem with jobs, a problem with Wall Street, and really the direction should be toward the federal government. They're the ones that uh, manipulate the system, and you talk talking about the banking industry, etc. That's all under federal jurisdiction. We have nothing to do with it. So they're camped out. We haven't had a real problem with them other than destroyed the grass. And the fact is unsightly. When you pass City Hall, you see this encampment. But the fact is, well, some of my colleagues have said, stay here as long as you want. Uh, it has to come to an end eventually, but hopefully it'll come to an end peacefully without a confrontation well, where, where, with the police. Where would you send them? Well, I think what they need to do is go to work, get a job, do something productive. I mean, what they're doing is occupying this and other parts of uh, municipal municipal areas. They're not accomplishing their goal because we have no control over what their goal is, this 1% versus 99%. We have no control over it whatsoever. We can't affect Wall Street. We can't affect the banking industry. We can't affect any of that. It's, it's not within our area of, of the issue where we can do something. Let me ask you a basic question, Dennis. When you knew they were going to come out, out here and just uh, assemble fine but once they started setting up tents which is now over three weeks ago didn't you realize it would come to this i didn't think it would come to this i thought they would make their point have their concern have the media come out and really and, and I, I didn't think it would last this long honestly i never thought it would last this long but i would say i've been down there i've seen what they're doing there the fact is they're basically policing themselves uh they have their trash cans they have their uh, andy gumps and the bottom line is they're not really causing disturbance for us doing our business at city hall but they're trying to send a message. And it's not only here. This has become an international thing where I think they're going to change the way governments run. And it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen in the steps of City Hall. But my point is, whatever they want to affect change to, that's not going to happen overnight. And 
if you just can't put up with them destroying the lawn, you know eventually you have to move them, and every day that they're here is another day that they're ensconced, and it could get ugly like Oakland. Well, I will guarantee that uh, meetings with the police department, I've met with the Los Angeles Police Department representatives, uh, we are not going to develop that kind of strategy, but we want to do is a, pos a positive uh, departure and not have it a confrontational departure. Because you see what's happened in Oakland, it hasn't turned out positive. Do you uh, actually have people that, that you can negotiate with here, like perhaps to move them? Pardon me? I didn't hear that. Do you have people here you can actually negotiate with for the possibility of moving the demonstrators? Well, Is there, there somebody are, there that you folks, trust? There are, I mean, it's kind of a fragmented group of individuals. They do have some individuals who claim leadership. Uh, those are the folks. But honestly, I thought they would get tired and move on to something else, but they haven't. And there's something that uh, there, when you have the unions joining them, you have the medical facility, you've got the giving food. A lot of the folks now are coming up from Skid Row and finding, hey, I can get medical, I can get food, and I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So you know, the initial intention, where they wanted to draw attention, has been diverted by a lot of people who are just using it for their own individual cause. Yeah, we've yes. run into some of those people you I just heard described. Them. I heard them. <laughs> All right, Dennis, thanks for coming on with us. Anytime, guys. Thank you. All right. All right. I City prom Councilman now, Dennis. I'm going to say this again just so everybody could hear. Uh, I promise, we promised that we'd try to get as many of you on the air as possible. It's just that the rest of you can't chant and yell at the same time. Otherwise, uh, all the people well, in the KFI audience won't be able to hear each individual. When they don't like one of your answers, John, that's what they're going to do, and that's what I, I know. Before. But it would it would help get view across if they didn't shout now, chant on the air. I have to ask you: yeah. when you were talking to that guy about illegal aliens, yeah, and there was a discussion of Native Americans, did you say they should have been tougher warriors? They were announcing that over the microphone. <laughs> you follow my question? Yeah. But it's Oh, yeah, you're, you're kind of dropping out let, there. Let me move over here. i got to get near the hill for it to work. Uh, okay. First, it was you? Um, all right, talk to this woman first. What's your name? My name is Beth. Uh, what? New York. Wait, 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 come over here. Wait, wait, just hold on, hold on. i got to get up on the hill because the microphone won't work without it. Okay. I think we're good here. Okay. I'm from New York. I couldn't be at Occupy Wall Street because I've lived here for the past year. I've lived in L.A. for the past year. I recently lost my job. I found out about this. I work 18 hours a day helping this movement move forward in a peaceful manner. And I'm not going to let those who try to say that we're not and that we're not going to make progress do so because it's false information. What's progress to you? What's progress? Well, we already have things going in our local governments that are disqualifying judges and political people who've taken money from corporations and banks to do their bidding. And also, we have things that are going before the Supreme Court this week, which most people don't even realize that has been um, being put together by our indigenous committee. It's actually a beautiful statement and comes... Hold on, let me, let me just move... Yeah, it's still dropping I, out a bit. Yeah. Hold on, I've got to go up to the hill. i got to get to the top of the hill. The microphone will keep uh, breaking up here. Is this good? Uh, no, oh, this is a, this, yeah, this hello. Hi. Uh, let's see. No, no, no. This is too close to the stage. I'm so sorry. We're trying to. All right, then let me let me. Uh, I'm interviewing people on KFI. Right, but actually doing an ecological show for sustainability, and you're being a little bit disruptive. So if you could go to the freedom of speech area by the fountain <laughs> where everyone is allowed, this is actually the sovereign nation of freedom and peace. I, I'm in the sovereign nation of freedom what? and peace? There were rules? I, I think I, I, I crossed the border here. You're not in the freedom of uh, speech can area. Can I move that way? Because the microphone isn't going to work over there. I know that's the free speech area, but it's not the, it's not the microphone works area. All right, so I'm just going to move down that way. How's that? Okay. All right, so uh, I'm sorry about this, guys. There's a, a you know technical. All right, all right. Okay. Maybe here. This is sacred land too. All right, it's sacred land. I don't mean. I'm not trying to offend and step on sacred land. Oh. Uh, is there any land that's not sacred? I. Uh, does that mean there's Indians buried under there? Is this sacred land? Uh, what you mind if I stand, uh, just stand here and interview people? No, you're moving closer to the van, so you're All doing right. better. Yeah, I think this is best because it's in the shade. It's not sacred. All right, who wants to speak next? 
Well, you didn't finish? All right, all right, I'll give you another 30 seconds. Go ahead. Who knew no, what's rules? going on here is there's a lot of educational things going on. Outreach, LA, we have people from UCLA coming here to teach every day. We have outreaches going to the occupations who are in trouble. We care about our brothers and sisters. There's a lot of intelligent okay. people working very hard, and we're making this movement work. Whether people like it or not, whether you guys realize it or not, you're part of the 99% because you're not billionaires, okay? And when your bosses start to crumble, so will you. And I hope you join us instead of propagating against us. All right. All right. Uh, who's next? Who would like to speak? All right. Uh, what's your name? Ali? Yep. Elijah Muhammad was my great grandfather of the Nation of Islam. I'm here to bring metaphysical quality, equality, consciousness, universal light, which is more flavorful than this engineer propaganda, which is the position that you guys want to play as a financial it's like a pussy ass decision to even oh, have oh, you here oh, without you being in the media tent. Because you guys know that there was going to be a group here pushing and shoving. You want more attention? Yeah. You really no, want, I, more I know. Actually, I, we actually came here, and I think we're living up to the deal. We want to hear individuals express themselves. I, I really do. So if you could tell me what you individually are here, we got hundreds of thousands of people listening. Here's your chance. I'm here for love. I mean, love doesn't always count in some cases, but it usually will if you just counteract all the negative public accounts that we've been um, hearing back from the, uh, the police and from our neighbors and other people that don't um, count us and people that don't respect us. If we don't love each other and we don't re um, respect us instead of you, which is like, you know, it's gravity right now, the fact that you guys are here and you're listening. This is because there's no counter part to what we're saying. So what we're saying is, why don't you guys just give advice to this actively hating or actively... I, I, does, right, I don't we, know uh, anybody actively hating. we got to take a break. we got to take a break. we got to play some uh, commercials. I hate to be judgmental, but this is not going to end well here at this park whenever they decide to move these people. I, I can tell you that. Oh, yeah, that's obvious. After analyzing this for 45 minutes, um, it's not going to go well. Dennis Nine, you better rethink the plan uh, <laughs> because, uh, you know, I don't think all these people, they're, they're kind of independent souls. They're not going to be talked into doing what they don't want to do, even if their, quote, leaders tell them. Okay. But that's just my prediction. I agree with you. We're going to talk. Yeah, I'm a lot further away than you are. We're, <laughs> we're going to continue at Occupy LA in downtown Los Angeles outside of City Hall as we get our first up-close look at the Occupy demonstration. Johnny Ken Show, KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. Johnny Ken Show, we're in uh, the Occupy LA tent city, 534 tents on the front lawn of City Hall. And uh, we are surrounded by dozens and dozens of people, many of whom will want to speak on the air on KFI. So uh, once again, uh, just to repeat myself, for those of just joining us, I'm, I'm asking everybody, uh, we'll try to give as many of you a chance to come on the air and talk for a minute or two. But if others shout and chant, then each individual can't be heard. Got a huge audience. They want to hear what's. They want to know what's going on. And the good thing about our show is we've got more time to do this. Your 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 speech won't be cut to eight seconds like they do on TV. We can give you a minute or two. What's your name? My name is Booker T. John, you you addressed the gentleman who first talked to you, and you asked him why is he here in L.A. and not in Washington D.C. Well, the financial structure that owns our social and political and economical system is not just in Washington D.C. It's all around the world. And what's so organic about this movement is that it sprung up essentially where the problem originated from, which is Wall Street, the Wall Street oligarchy, okay? Banks and cooperations run America. Just didn't start with Citizens United. The history of this country is mercantilism. So it's always been about money and capital. At this point, capital is wrecking this country. Go to D.C. D.C. is controlled. D.C. is controlled by special interest groups. Oh, no, I agree with you. Wall Street and the banking industry and the lobby, uh, yeah, they, they all uh, bribed both uh, the Democrats and the Republicans. They work hand in hand. Now, as, as to the outbursts, we don't have control over disparate elements that are all types of people here. We are leaderless and we are structuralists, but we don't deny people the opportunity to speak. Everybody can't speak. Very few people can speak thoroughly for this. Are country. you going to be able to be effective without a leader and without a structure in the long run? 
This movement is 27 days old, okay? And you refer to the mayor in terms of the mayor complaining about the grass, the trees, and the sprinklers. You have to understand the mayor is a politician. He wants to be a governor, a senator, or a president. So the mayor is going to do whatever he's told to do. The mayor has a lot of pressure on him because for the last seven to eight days, there's been cities where mayors have been declaring war on the occupiers. The, the, the mayor here doesn't want to stifle or stunt his political growth and his political movement, so naturally he's going to say those things. He did throw us a bone out. He said he would suggest to the city council that they find another place for us. I don't think that they need to find another place for us, okay? What do you think is going to happen when the police finally order you all to move? I think when they order us to move, I think the respectful, responsible people here would deal with that. I don't think we're going to have violence here, and I don't think we're going to have the problem. You don't think you're going to have an Oakland situation? I, I know we not because we have responsible leaders like the uh, all, uh, no, responsible facilitators like the gentleman that you talked to behind you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get this gentleman over here. What's your name? My name is Rudy. I am a commodity broker, and I am a capitalist. And uh, I'm glad to hear that you understand that the corporatism has corrupted our political process, and uh, that makes you part of the 99% officially. This is a movement of radical inclusion, and that is what you see here, and that's why you see such a wide array of voices who want so many things, but the common ground that brings not only everyone here, but the 99% is not a populist speech, but the popular idea and what is understood that we have a big, big problem with corporate greed. If you consider that cold corporate culture starts from the top down, you consider, for example, Al Davis. He had his hand in the Raiders all over the place. He created a certain culture there. Well, the same thing happens in corporate America. So what we want is to change that culture so that we have politics that are represented for one person. Uh, how, how practically do you change corporate greed? That's, that's part of human nature, isn't it? You, 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 uh, well, you pass laws, for example, repealing Citizens United, uh, reinstating Glass-Steagall Act, banning lobbying, ending corporate personhood, and uh, there's, there's a few more things you can think about, but primarily those would be the things that would have very significant change in the culture. Ex explain the Glass-Steagall Act to people, because you're right about that. It was repealed in the late 90s, and it led to the big uh, economic crash a few years ago. Explain what that was. Correct. Glass-Steagall, what it was, it was a pass in the Depression, 1933 era, to, uh, well, limit commercial banking from colluding their investment speculative uh, uh, sect uh, and creating safer, more more uh, stable banking. So the, so the banks weren't supposed to take money and invest it like a... Like a not, not in speculative form, exactly. So it's a collusion keeping deposit and speculation separate. So it's just, just keeping the commercial aspect of banking to itself and the investment proprietary speculative aspect separate. And so there was lobbying that was made through, you know, the political powers of plutocracy that we see from Goldman Sachs, for example, uh, who uh, gives money to both parties so they can repeal a, a Glass-Steagall Act in 1999. They did so. They knew what was coming. They, they saw they saw the right in the wall, and they they uh, they, they had a, a huge uh, a profiteering scheme that uh, is a result of what we see here is a, a big collapse across the world. Uh, they knew these uh, assets were toxic. Yeah, no, no, you're right, you're right. Uh, we got a break, okay? So we got to do the news, play a few commercials, more money for the corporation, and then uh, we come back. We'll talk to more of you, okay? Uh, John and Ken here. We're standing on the uh, City Hall lawn among uh, Intense City, 534 tents. Big crowd around us here. They all want to talk and tell you why they're here, why they're doing what they're doing. John and Ken, KFI, AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. It's the John and Ken Show. John Cobalt and Ken Jampo. We're in downtown L.A. Occupy L.A. 534 tents. Woo! Hundreds of people here. And... We're in the shade. Come out. We're under a tree. We've got a swarm around us, people uh, from TV and from the Occupy crowd, and I guess a few KFI listeners who want to know exactly what's going on. So uh, what we've lined up some people. Oh, by the way, we'll continue the Conrad Murray trial coverage tomorrow. It's just that in this situation here, these people have their chance to talk for the next three hours. We might as well keep putting them on. All right, so let's start. Uh, what's your name? Don Don, why don't you hold the mic yourself there? Make it easier for you. All right, Don, where are you from? South Central LA. All right, tell me, tell me what, 
What's your passion about this? I'm passionate about talk right into the mic. Blaming Latinos for everything from uh, from the Dream Act to the border to Arizona to taking citizenship away. The whole media is pointing at illegal immigrants and and, and legals and all immigrants. And they're, and they're being attacked and, and blamed right, right now while a massive looting of our country is taking place. And we all can smell the smoke, the conservatives, the, the, the liberals, everybody smells the smoke. We know there's a fire and false leaders have come forth and, and pointing at my community, the Latinos. And I'm here to tell the conservatives, it's not us. If you want to really find your money, what you got jacked for, you follow the people that have the money, not broke people. And if you look at our city, Pico Union, East LA, South Central, we're the poorest part of the community. We've been trying to speak up for the longest and people ignored us. And you need the left wing and the right wing to fly. And they're trying to divide us. If you have a, if you have a rowboat and you paddle with the left or the or the right yeah you're gonna have momentum but you're just going in cycles and we're not going straight ahead we need to move straight ahead and so you are our, if you are on goodness side we're all on goodness side if you're on goodness side then that then we're on the same we're on the same page we, we know there's a problem the tea party they know there's a problem they're wrong about where they're pointing at and the only way you're going to solve the problem is if right. what's 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 the worst thing that's happened what's what's the number one villain in your mind about since the economic collapse. The worst part about it is that, that nobody's doing anything about it. Obama's barely addressing the issue supposedly three years after the fact, but yet we all knew what the problem was, and the problem is they hijacked our currency. The Federal Reserve owns our currency, and they use titles as, as Federal Reserve to give the implication that they're part of our federal government, but they're not. They're foreigners, and they control our interest, student loans. They just announced students are over a trillion dollars in debt. That's the future of our country, the students. And people don't realize that. Well, and, and how are you personally affected by all this? What is What's affected, happened to you in this economy? I, I actually believe in the Constitution that I uh -huh. have the right to own property, and the police took my, my car away, and, I, and and it's been over. Why? They took your because car. I didn't have $650 to pay the ticket, so they suspended my license, and when they went into the Burger King parking lot, they ran my tag, seen it was expired, and then they ran my license, and they see my license was expired for not paying the ticket the collection has, and so they took my vehicle away, and now it's been there. Well, I'm with you on that. I absolutely <laughs> hate the way <laughs> the L.A., Nazis. yeah, oh, the park Nazis, the way they hand out tickets. Okay, exactly. I mean, I almost got a $50 ticket the other day because uh, my garlic knots were, took too long to make. And yet those, those not, what you call Nazi uh, police meter guys, you know it's illegal if I put money in the, in the meter or somebody doesn't have enough money and they're getting a ticket. Did you know that they're, they're, they're cutting tickets? Teachers, first round, second round, they're lined up for third round cuts, but they're not cutting none of the parking meters. Why? Because they're joining. I would fire all yeah, the parking exactly. meter attendants. Oh, all right. Right. Those are our streets. We own the streets. Hey, we got some common ground here. All right. Thank you very much. Now, we got a, we got a story here. What's your name? My name is Carlos Marroquin. Carlos, you lost your home some years ago, some, some kind of scandal story. Why don't you explain it? Yes, correct. Um, I was a scam out of my home, which I took those scammers to the... I took those scammers to the... Uh, the Supreme Court here in uh, the Supreme Court in Los Angeles, California. How did they take your home? I mean, how did you lose your home? They actually changed the title to my home and started taking all the equity. I, uh, they literally, I had three hundred thousand dollars of equity. I was not behind payments, and they literally scammed me out of my home. Who, who did this? How, how did they change the title of your home? Wait, we got another woman here who's helping her with the story. What's your name? Doc Mary Lynn Pickwell. Lynn Pickwell, what it is is there's straw buyers, and it was a scam industry set up by the real estate agents and brokers. And our FBI, our city, our governments knew about this, and they did nothing to stop it. Now, I've heard largely about this. Run by Countrywide, largely, but there were other players in it. And what they did was they stole his identity. They sold his title up underneath them, sold it to another buyer who flipped it to another buyer. Countrywide did this? Yes, sir. Sold his title without his knowledge to, a, to a, a straw buyer. Your Vice President, Todd Box should be beaten. He should be incarcerated. That's a little strong. Sorry. No, no. Todd cool book, Bach man. took his paperwork and hit it. I won my case at the L.A. Superior Court in 2007, and Bank of America, which now owns Countrywide, literally ignored the judge's decision and still foreclosed using fraudulent documents and threw me out of my home. So you won the case in I court, the case. and they still the wouldn't give you your home back? No, I had the they, they got smarter. When they couldn't beat the fact that the judge awarded solely back to the Marroquin family, they took them to UD court, unlawful detainer court, because how they got all Americans out in this country was they took the, the banks took them to unlawful detainer. It has different laws. And they what is that unlawful detainer. detainer? Unlawful detainer is how you evict somebody. So they took, so they got you out of the court that could protect you and took you to a court where you didn't have protections. The banks got huge zombie teams of lawyers, and the judges are complicit in this. Yes. They did not. The judge, the judge at the, LA, uh, at the Lancaster Superior Court refused to even see the judgment that another judge over here in the, in the LA, California, 
render on my favor. They, he literally he didn't want to see it. He, he said didn't we see will it. not look at How that evidence. That well, I, this is, I mean, I believe you. This is just hard to believe. that. I mean, I have heard about companies selling homes to straw buyers behind the owner's back. I've heard that. But to win in court and then to have the whole thing, oh, you got the illegal I document. That's a document. I can tell you the name, yes. DC 3484. I can tell you the number. Yeah. This is where it gives me quiet title back to my property, yet Bank of America, countrywide, Dutch bank, Do which I is a Ger bank? German bank, refused to acknowledge the judge's decision and stole my home. And we went to the $300,000 of equity. I was not behind. They stole my home. And the, and, the, and the Attorney General of California and Kamala Harris has done nothing about it, even though that I have uh, complied with everything that they have asked me to do to, to give out a, any complaint. Do you have an attorney? Uh, attorney? We had five attorneys. We had Hollywood raising money for this man. Everybody, this is what they did. They made the American homeowner go out and hire attorneys because Obama and the president before him did not want to deal with this. Congress pushed it to the courts because that meant that everyone had to go get attorneys and spend years tied up in courts. The courts were so backed up that they had to put a moratorium on foreclosure. How, how many people are unhappy with Obama here? Just. Uh... No, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going down that road. What I'm saying is, no, he could have stopped the people. Let's let's stop. He put millions of children, families on the streets in the last three years. He put vet elderly people tossed out on the streets instead of making the banks lower the principal, take the mortgage away, keep people in their homes, and reset the American financial housing market that Wall Street stole. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. All right well Thank said. you for your story. All right. We've got to take a break. All right. We're, uh, we're here in uh, Los Angeles, downtown, front of City Hall, the great Occupy LA tent city, 534 tents. A lot of people want to talk, and uh, they want you to hear their message. So we will continue on the John and Ken Show, KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. John and Ken Show, KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio, standing pretty much in the center of Occupy LA in downtown LA, outside of City Hall in the uh, tent encampment. Or, of course, the news last night from the mayor was it may be time to go. Now he's talking about moving these people to another location, but we're spending the afternoon seeing what they have to say. Looks like we got another guy in front of us here. This is the, who do you want to talk to now, John? Who's first here? This guy. We're trying to keep things in order here. What's your name? My name is Michael Howard. All right, Michael, what, uh, what animates you? What gets you involved here? I'm very interested in the environment. Today's Eco Thursday. There's a bunch of people who have been speaking about the environment. And this weekend is Green Festival at the L.A. Convention Center. And, you know, it's the only plan that we have. No matter, no matter what political party you're in, no matter if you're conservative a little, I mean, everybody needs clean air, clean water. We need to pass on a good future to our children, our grandchildren. I don't think anybody's for dirty air and dirty water. <laughs> All right, but the laws there's passed. there there are laws that have been passed that are kind of either not enforced or you know corporations a lot of corporations are getting away with destroying our planet, kind of getting away with murder of our children, our grandchildren, and there's even current people today that in sort of Cancer Alley, for example, there's people like in Louisiana or in poor poor neighbors. So your connection to some of the other protesters here is is again the corporation. The, the, the faceless, soulless corporation doing damage, in your view. Some people think they're doing damage to the economy, the environment. It's not always faceless, nameless. Like Monsanto, for example, those guys are terrible. They need to be shut down. But they actually have people who are in government that are from their, formerly working from their corporation, that now are in the government overseeing them. Well, that's, that's how, that is how it works. Yeah, you have the former employees working in government, and you also have a lot of bribe money coming from the companies into the government. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name's Isai Morales. I'm an actor, but I'm not here as an actor. I'm here as a human being who wants to figure out I what, thought that was you. what gives. Hi, how are you? He's yeah. the movie guy. He recognizes La Bamba. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, people need an outlet. You know, what you see here what the media likes to present as the wild and crazy, the hippie types. You know, we have so many people, but even they, they're a dying breed. You can't go anywhere. You can't do anything without being fined, without having the state or some sort, some sort of corporation charge you, charge you for everything. And it's got to give. And nobody's been held accountable. That's why these people are angry. That, you know, a, a man goes to jail for 15 years for stealing a $100 bill, which he then give, gives back to the bank. Returns it, but he gets 15 years. But no bankster gets any time in jail for ruining our system. Just because something is legal does not make it right, does not make it lo uh, um, moral. 
And that's what I think these people are, 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 are protesting. No, well, I'm with you on that. I mean, none of the bad guys went to jail on Wall Street. I think a... what the people that aren't here want to know is what would bring an end to this? What kind of justice? What would be the answer? What would be the thing that everyone would say, okay, well, I, either I, our I, message has been heard or what well, we want has been done? Ultimate change of the system. The system is a huge machine. All right. It's got all sorts of mechanisms. We have a society where we have atomic news. You hear about Watergate, yeah, they, they shut those guys down, but not the system that creates it. You have people that. But that's like, so huge. How fast it, do you think something is, like I that could affect? I think consciousness. What we're doing here is having people at least share information. There's uh -huh. no place, I mean, unless you're a big radio station, there's no way for the people to communicate amongst themselves without a commercial sponsor. Everything isn't money. We need it to survive, but there has to be another way. But are you way. looking for an overthrow like Libya? What are you looking for? No, and even Libya's overthrow. Some people are shaking, yes. I, I, I do not trust that overthrow, by the way. Uh -huh. Millions of people protested for him. Call it Stockholm Syndrome, but the fact that there's so much oil and minerals and the fact that Gaddafi wanted to go off the dollar into gold with his rest of his friends in Africa, that's what got him killed. Okay, it isn't because we want to save their people. We could care less about other people and dictators who we make money from. All right, but bringing it back to here, where do you see all this going? I don't know. Here's yeah. the thing: you don't have to have the answer to everything. No, it could be a let long time away. Know something's got to give. That's all it is. You know, we don't have the same uh, uh, discipline and organizational skills as other organizations, but we do have common heart. We do have the fact that we haven't gotten violent, that we haven't let provocateurs take over this movement that's very powerful we don't want to be turned into what 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 uh, glenn beck says hordes of masses are going to go out and kill you no yeah. we may go out and we'll kill you with kindness and that's what i think the message is now are you camping here too or you're I'm just not camping. being a part I've of got this? a house that i'm trying to hang on to to be honest with you yeah. it's it's bad i lost a lot of money i lost everything i ever worked for in the econ economic downturn mm -hmm. all of a sudden what i invested in was worth less than what i owed for it and it was bad and I got lucky to get out of that. Hopefully, and I'm an actor. People think I got millions. I don't. I just became a father. I believe in hard work. I believe in a lot of the principles that the right wing, uh, you know, espouse. Hard work, independence. But we also believe in a level playing field. We also believe that people are not treated fairly and equally with laws and systems that we can't figure out. There's lawyers that they have that make the tax code so complicated. I, I, you can't even uh, approach it. So what, I, what we're saying is something's got to give. We cannot continue. We cannot let this go on. And hopefully there will not be any bloodshed. Hopefully no innocent people will be hurt. But as it is already in Oakland, a, a veteran, a Marine veteran, has had a concussion with, you know, non-lethal non -lethal weapon. His skull, a fractured skull. Why? For doing the very American thing that these people are doing. This is American, to stand up to tyranny, corporate or otherwise. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. Yeah. What's your Rapper Sauce Haley, the rapper with no curse words, took some of my proceeds, fed the homeless, and now I'm trying to come up with programs to keep kids in school. So what got you involved here? You know, the, the, the fight of the people out here, you know, they, they're working hard every day. So, you know, I have to come out and show my support and, and show love to the people because that's what it's about. You know, the people need to step up and do the right thing. What's the one thing you'd want to change if you could be dictator for a day? You know, it's more. It's more. There's people who just need to step up and, and, and do the right thing. You know, that's if, if I could step up and do the right thing, take money from my CD sales and and feed homeless people. You know, people, everybody do what they supposed to do. Then this world be much better. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. Who else wants to speak? Uh, no okay. lack of people. He's giving you his okay. cards. All right. Uh, is that your name? It's the ID. I guess. Gessel, uh, Todd Gessel. That's me, man. All right. You're a veteran. Yes, I am. What war? Uh, what war? I fought in the Gulf War. And in Panama. So uh, why are you here? Basically, the disparity of income, the lack of representation for Americans, the fact that a criminal became president of the United States. A, a uh, which criminal would that be? Uh, G.W. Bush, who shirked his uh, military duty. He was an uh, admitted alcoholic, cocaine user, and drunk driver that became criminal, United, became a president of the United States. Uh, I lost my job. I'm an L.A. County employee. Uh, I'm mad about the importation of this illegal labor force, the uh, sending of jobs overseas, the disparity of in income, the spreading, you know, the lack of wealth being spread around the nation, the the uh, fact that the government is misinforming people about what they're really doing overseas. Uh, like the gentleman said before, we don't care about the human rights of Libyans. All we cared about was the fact that that. Uh, 
There's a uh, effort by China and others to devalue and get um, get the dollar off of the uh, world currency. And okay, just short on time because we've got to do the news. Thanks, thanks very much. All right, we'll be uh, back with more. We're at Occupy LA in downtown LA, outside of City Hall, right in the center of things. It's the Johnny Ken Show, KFI AM six forty. More stimulating talk radio. Let's check in with Terry Ray Elmer in the news. Johnny Ken Show, John Cobell and Ken Shampoo from Occupy LA on City Hall's lawn. Five hundred thirty four tents, we're told, and uh, there's lots of people here gathered around us, and uh, a lot of people are speaking on a large number of issues. Whatever, uh, whatever their passion is, whatever animates them to join this movement. Before we get to them, Eric Leonard. Takes this walk every day through Occupy LA on his way from uh, LA County Superior Court, where he's covering. Let me find a better place for the microphone. The Conrad Murray uh, trial, death of Michael Jackson, and uh, you had really good stuff today. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, it, it's a shame we don't have a little more time. But uh, today brought on the final two witnesses uh, from the defense case. One of them is an addiction medicine specialist who was there to testify about uh, whether Michael Jackson was addicted or had abused the uh, the painkiller Demerol. That's a big thrust of the defense case because to the Conrad Murray side, it, it justifies why, again, this is the defense speaking, but why it is that Jackson may have turned to something like propofol in order to sleep. Demerol has a significant side effect of insomnia. So it's, a, it's an important part of the defense case. But as they were introducing this evidence, the way they got it in was by reading through the medical records that they subpoenaed from Jackson's dermatologist, that other doctor we've heard about, Arnold Klein. And as it turns out, Jackson was going there every few days to get Botox and uh, Restylane injections in his armpits, in his face, and in his groin. Botox in his groin. Why? Well, according to the medical records, uh, Botox in the groin is a great way to reduce the amount of groinal sweating that you might have. And so... Uh, for is that right? Well, that's why he was getting them, according to the, the documents. I can groinal only... sweating? Is that a medical term? Groinal sweating. It's the only thing I can go off are the medical documents. So that's why he was seeing him every couple of days. And each time he went in for a Botox injection, he would also get a couple hundred milligrams of Demerol, which, uh, even according to the defense witness, is a staggering amount of Demerol. Yeah, for a, a, a Botox injection in the groin. Yeah, did he have a wrinkly groin? Uh, unclear. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not noted in the medical records, and uh, no, no evidence of that has been, uh, has been offered. It was just for the sweating. Apparently just for the sweating. This afternoon, they finally got to their final witness, this guy Paul White, who's the big propofol expert for the defense. He started testifying, didn't really get to anything great. He's back on tomorrow morning, and uh, I'm sure we'll have good stuff tomorrow. All right, Botox in the groin. Thank you, Eric. That was worth the wait. All right, Eric Leonard there. Uh, we are uh, here at Occupy LA, and we're talking to uh, people who have uh, gathered around us. Now, uh, I always forget who I promised to speak first. It was you. Uh, the man with the skulls around his neck. Is it a Halloween thing, or you always wear that? No, that's a typical thing for me. All right, what, what's your name? <laughs> Cyril Wright, coming from Burbank, California. I just want to say that this Occupy thing has been going on 200 cities in the country and over 2,000 in the world. I'm proud, like everyone else, to be here. Why are you here? I'm here because of all the oppressions that's been going on in this country, such as um, people being kicked out of their homes, foreclosures, people being thrown off welfares, uh, and, and other people that I've been um, that have been oppressed by this government. Do you do you think the people getting foreclosed on bear any responsibility for signing a deal that they couldn't uh, that, that they couldn't make payments on? In some respects, yes, but in other respects, pe of the banks throwing them out with only a three days' notice, no. So, uh, what would you do? I mean, you know, you can't have everybody defaulting on their mortgage. The banking system would crumble. I yeah, mean, you, but you can't have, you can't have um, all the banks throwing out everyone in on the street. Would you, would you like that if someone happened to you? What's that? Yeah, you can. This is America. You can do whatever you want. You can feed people paint you can feed people poison doesn't matter as long as you got money buddy all right deal with it 
perhaps some of the, I, perhaps I, I don't follow should, feeding people pain. we should take example of some of the greatest countries ever to exist. All the, all the paint that's in children's candy. Perhaps we should take an example from uh, some of the greatest Cheeto, cultures that ever existed. Well, wait, one at a time, guys. That, that gave away houses for free. Housing should be free. We, the American people... You think housing should paid. be free? Absolutely, 100%. All right, well, wait, well, how would that work? That work well, hold on, hold on a second. How would it work? If I, if I, wait, hold on. No, wait. Well, I, want to, I want to give you your time, but i got to, I got to follow this, okay? I uh, develop. I believe I didn't got my time. I was interrupting. You know what? I'll, I'll get back to you. I, I will. I promise. You'll be. You'll be next. I'll get back to you. But I, I want to now. If a developer, he has to. He has to hire people to build the house, right? No. That's and he's got to pay for the materials, and he's got to pay the labor. No, that's so that's why true. he sells the house for. No, no. There should be a reformation in the old ways. If someone's house burnt down, all their neighbors got together. He went and got some wood out of the forest or wherever he could get some wood from and built a brand new house. This is how we should be doing things. We should be taking back our property. We should be taking back lots and building what we want there we the people should decide what we the people should do we should kick out these corporations and get rid of them well, okay we should kick out corporations absolutely. from where well, well where were you going to kick them out from well, well yeah just stop just stop buying them okay so some of the things that occupy would like us to do is take out any out of major uh, bank organizations and put them into credit unions. Number two stop buying from Sony number three stop buying from McDonald's Hey, all right, let me go back to this man because he was cut short. Uh, all right, well, what else do you have to say? Um, that everyone was denied their First Amendment right of the Constitution when these occupies were going on, such as the police arresting 700 people on the Brooklyn Bridge in New York for simply having protest signs, and also the other over, well, I believe it was six or 700 people that were occupying Washington, D.C., the White House, when they wanted the troops home, they were also arrested. Other people that were... this. All these protests and occupations that have been going on around the country, not one of us has a single weapon. There is no one with a gun. There is no one with a machete. There is no one with a Well, up in Oakland, they started using plates and skillets as weapons. So, but, all these, all, but all these things are going on. Where are our amendments? Do they just, do they just disappear? Well, as soon as well we you know the First Amendment is an, an absolute where you could say anything at any hour at any at any place there there's there are a city can't put in restrictions you know that otherwise we'd have chaos there the city is putting restrictions with the police and the nation is putting restrictions with with the corporations of the news only did you realize I mean that if, if I was screaming in the middle of the street in my block at 2 in the morning the police would come and arrest me because it means no one else can sleep and they have the right to sleep I don't have the right to keep people up all night this thing is not being this. This thing is not being disturbance. How is it that people are being sprayed down, arrested for having a sign in a police officer's face? How is that? How is that freedom? How is that liberty? How is that uh, progression of this country that we're supposed to be free and liberal in in the so-called democracy? Okay. Thanks very much. Right. Uh, okay. Hold on. Hold on. What's your name? My name is Susan Lomas. I'm from MotorHousingCrime.org. I've got the big tent right there. Yeah. And you said something a little earlier, something to the effect of um, why should people get mortgages for free? That's why should people, did I say why should people get mortgages? No, I, I, no I, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, is, what's that? There's a difference between housing and mortgages, okay? There are corporations under the auspices of banks. Who I, I've never said that people should or should not get mortgages for free. I think what, I'm t what I was talking about, what I'm talking about is that um, people made deals. They promised the bank they would pay a certain amount of each month. What? Homeowners. Homeowners, yes. Homeowners did. And some of these people can't pay back the bank. So what do you expect the bank to do? We can't have... set up to fail, and those deals, which are also referred to as deeds of trust and promissory notes, are contracts. Okay? And those contracts were not made with the banks. The banks, in most cases, are in court when they shouldn't be in court purporting to own right to claim a home because these mortgages have been pulled into mortgage-backed securities and rebundled into government-sponsored entities that the government buys back from these big corporations. Uh, yes, except it does come down to a homeowner's responsibility not to sign themselves into a bad deal. Now, sometimes bad things happen to people and they can't pay their mortgage. But a lot of these people simply didn't read, you know, the, the, the contract. They didn't see that their interest was going to go from 2% to 11% on an adjustable rate. All right, we've got to take a break. Example. 
I this is getting too complicated. Right, I got to take a break. All right. All right. All right. We're going to continue at Occupy we're... LA. Uh-huh. We are outside of City Hall. It's the, we got we to make money. Sorry, lady. We got to pay our mortgages. <laughs> All right. Clear John Channel has Show, a big mortgage. KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. John and Ken Show. John Cobalt and Ken Shampoo, downtown L.A., Occupy L.A., in front of uh, Los Angeles City Hall. Where if you stand in just the right place, you can get a contact high every now and then. There's a little whiff of... I've been here for the last half hour. This is a nice place right here. There seems to be some sort of current. That's yeah. flowing through this air. That's yeah, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to move. This is, right. this is pleasant. You were, you were uh, surrounded I, by women with uh, coverings over their faces. I, uh, one woman here who wants to call herself Judy has a bandana around her face, covering uh, her nose and mouth. Only her eyes can be seen. And what does it say? Ninety nine percent. Ninety nine percent on the front. Yeah. Uh, Judy, what, uh, what, why are you wearing that mask on your face? Uh, there's just so many cameras around here, and I just feel like I need to protect my identity. It is my right to protect my identity. Well, why are you here? Um, I'm here because of all of the uh, issues. That, uh, you can stream everything back to economic injustice in the United States of America. Uh, you're here for animal rights, whether you're here because of the mortgages, whether you're here because the seats in the House and the Senate are bought and paid for by the corporations. Um whether whatever you're here for I personally I'm a nurse I worked in the medical field I found that I could no longer morally or ethically do my job because of how the medical field is so run by how much money they can make I worked for a hospital that was completely money driven instead of driven to the, the best benefit for the health care of the patient and what did that mean for the people <clears throat> for the uh, for the patients I, th- I think instead of getting a um, the test that would be less expensive and less dangerous. Um, doctors were writing uh, orders to give tests that were more expensive and more dangerous just to make money for the hospital. But that's not what I wanted to talk with you about. I think the most important issue, and, and the pharmaceutical companies, I could go on and on and on. I think the most important issue this week that's happening today is what happened in Oakland last night and the night before last night. We do have a First Amendment right which says we are allowed to assemble peacefully in public spaces to express our grievances that we have with the government. It's not only our right, but it's our obligation and our duty to protect them. There's also legal restrictions to that. Well, there are. No. I have, I have friends that were on the front lines in Oakland. They said that nobody threw anything. That is a complete lie. There is no videotapes of anybody throwing anything. I know for a fact that they will put provocateurs in our group, we have identified some here at Occupy LA. Who is they putting provocateurs? Who's the they? The, it's hard to say. The police, the politicians, who knows? But there are people, there are people here to cause disruptions that have no. What were they doing here? Uh, during our general assembly meetings, they'll try to start fights or they'll they'll try to create chaos, and they have nothing to do with us. They don't have the any of our enemy. Uh, Could it be the anarchists? I mean, there is a group they like to infiltrate public events and cause a ruckus. I love how you um, you conservatives love to think that anarchists are behind everything. No, no, I'm not a conservative. But, but, but what, spearing propaganda. No, 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 there really, no, I mean, there really is a group, you know, at the MacArthur Park uh, ruckus a few years ago, remember when some TV reporters got beaten? There is a group that wear red bandanas. They call themselves anarchists. I don't. That's the name for themselves. And they like to infiltrate public uh, public events. I think they hijacked an illegal alien rally that day. And and they caused, uh, you know, they, they, they goaded the cops on. The cop, cops took the bait. Next thing you know, there was a riot. And the cops were beating reporters. So I wonder, you know, it's the first group I think of when you're telling me about outside uh, agitators. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a group of provocateurs. A true anarchist is nonviolent. Anarchist is a word that came from... Anybody who didn't, who was against the monarchy in England, that instead of having a hierarchy and a level of government, they just want to know. They were the opposite of that, and they just wanted to. Well, what What do you want to happen if you could do? Say you're a dictator for the day. What one thing would you do? I would end ca- campaign finance. I don't think that if you're a large corporation, you should be able to put large amounts of money behind candidates and buy their seats in the House and the Senate. I want to give the government back to the people and in the hands of the people. I want the people. Yeah, well, I think the Supreme Court has decided that corporations are people and they have a First Amendment right to free speech, and part of that free speech right is campaign contributions. That's not me. That's the Supreme Court. Okay, that Supreme Court was mostly placed there by Reagan and George Bush. They are a horrible Supreme Court. I'm sick of having to wait for people in the Supreme Court to die to get fair people up in there making decisions. I think everyone knows the Supreme Court is unfair based on the fact that we just recently executed Troy Davis 
in this country, a man who nine witnesses recounted their testimony saying they were coerced by police and there was a lot of reasonable doubt whether or not he committed a crime and they killed this man. Okay. And the Court we got to take a commercial break, all right? We're going to make right, more thank money. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. The greedy corporations at work. Uh, all right. When we come back at Occupy LA, an old friend returns to the Johnny Ken Show. Ted Hayes, the homeless advocate, will be here to talk about his take on all of this. We're in downtown LA outside of City Hall at Occupy LA. It's the Johnny Ken Show. KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. Today is it's the Johnny Kent Show in the effort to repeal the California Dream Act. I know you go. I forgot. You're the one that asked me. Can you know I what? Say I'm stoned. Seriously. I, <laughs> Yeah, you look a little giddy and red face. I am. No, I'm really stoked. John and Ken Show. John Cobell and Ken <laughs> Shampo are at Occupy LA. Yes. Downtown LA. City Hall lawn. 534 tents were sold by LAPD. Hundreds of uh, people milling about. We got a few dozen surrounding us, and we're interviewing a lot of people. Yeah, in fact, uh, in the news, of course, today is the fact that uh, the mayor issued a statement yesterday saying that uh, this encampment can't stay here indefinitely, which really caught our interest. And, of course, what's been going on in Oakland, Atlanta, and other cities where they've been breaking up some of these camps. They seem to be on the verge of that in San Francisco. So it's another one of the reasons we're here. We're going to talk to uh, Ted Hayes in just a few minutes when he comes back, because I told him to come back. Oh, and... he wandered away? Oh, I told him after five, because you had people lined up to speak to. Oh, okay. But All this right. man in a suit and a tie came up to me. Yes, he said he told me he works on, worked on Wall Street for 10 years. Yeah, his name is Bob, and uh, he's, well, let him explain his story. Well, my story is I'm part of the 99%. But you're wearing a suit and a tie, and you look, you really stand out. Well, um, you got this blue uh, surgical glove on. Uh, injury. It's interesting how you're, you're pointing out irrelevant facts to your audience. I'm part of the 99%. This is radio. They can't I, see you. I, now you're describing it. 30 million people wear suits and ties to work, and those people typically don't have the time to come down here. I, however, um, started a couple companies. I've been on Wall Street, and I had a couple years in the 1%, but I'm in the 99% now. And I'm representing 30 or 40 million Americans who have good voices, hopefully will be heard about the change that needs to be had. And it's all around the crimes that were committed. There have been high finance crimes that are hard to understand, that the regular folk can't understand because it's boring and it's complex, and they're crimes. And in the same way that Martha Stewart and... Uh, Mark McGuire and Barry Bonds are, have gone in front of Congress and been accused of lying in front of Congress. The senior executives of the biggest banks in Wall Street have lied in front of Congress. And, and we can try these people, and we can get back money that was stolen. And so if I'm in a suit, because I wear a suit to work, and I'm part of the 99%, when I show up here, I should wear what I wear. And I want to make it clear that there's a lot of people who wear suits that are part of the 99%, and we think we can have a voice to help everybody who's not wearing a suit. And I think what your point is, and look, we understand this. The fact that these criminals that you just described aren't being tried is because the politicians are in their pockets. I couldn't agree with you more. We've got 52 or 62 senators that are millionaires and 250 members of Congress that are millionaires. That doesn't represent the 99%. We need a radical reshaping of the Constitution of the people who are representing us to better better reflect who we are. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks for talking to us. All right. Very good. Uh, I've got a woman here who's got her uh, little baby. What's your name? My name is Jenny. Not, Je my real name. Not your real name. Uh, you're wearing a, a scarf around your face as well. What's your little baby's name? Uh, just baby. We'll go with just baby. Just baby? Is that a boy or girl here? A little boy. A little boy. All right. How old is he? He's four months. All right. He's uh, sitting in one of those little front uh, frontal uh, fanny packs. All right. Why, why are you here with, with your little baby? Because I'm a single mother that would love to be able to provide for my child. And I can't right now very well because I'm relying on the government's welfare. Would you believe me if I said I would wanted you to end it today? You'd want us to end your welfare. It's not helping. What do, you, what do you mean? The the cash program that they give you is not helping me. The way the government is using their money is not helping me. How is it not helping you? Because they're not using that money in programs that I need instead. What do you need? I need accurate child care that I can count on on a daily basis for my infant child so that I can go and work and provide for him. You know, I don't want to have to worry about him. And you can't trust these government places that they say are like government approved but they're not 
and by individuals that it should be like a public school system, you know, in other countries. Well, yeah, they, they do have, I think, government subsidized child care, and there's local people in the neighborhood who take the babies in. Point, though, subsidizes the point. It's not, it's not a right like public education. It's a, it's a gift right now. It's money from the taxpayers to pay for my child care to go work. You know, I, I want the government to listen to listen to us and do their job. You know, we put them there to do their job, and I just want them to start doing it. Uh, what what else animates you about joining this group besides your own personal circumstances? Besides my own, because we set this up, we like order. You know, we put the government in place because we like order, and they're just not listening to us. I think that if they start listening to what we truly want, you know, we, we would have... I don't think they care. And that's the point. I think they should care. Well, what do you do, and I, I'm fairly certain of this, if most of the people in Washington of both parties, both elected officials and all the bureaucrats, they really don't care. They're in it for themselves. You know, Washington, D.C. is the wealthiest metropolitan area in the country. The average government worker is making $125,000, or at least that's the average median salary in that metro. That, that's a lot of money. That's two and a half times what the average American household gets. I agree. <laughs> You're right completely. It's not fair. And, I, you know, we, we just need to have, I mean, I think that it's appropriate to spread your wealth. If you're in the top 100% or 1%, sorry, we're all 100%. <laughs> but uh, if you're in the 1%, why can't you spread your wealth and help us out with programs we need? All right, thanks. All right. What do we got? Uh, what do we got next here? Who who wants to come on? You want to come on? What's your name? My name is Chris Leo Five Five. You know why I'm here? Why? Because corruption. They seized my home with no paperwork for eviction and they bribed the sheriff and they took my high five hundred thousand dollar home did you pay your mortgage yes I had no mortgage at the time I had a forged alter deed and they seized possession without you had what I'm not familiar with that term alter deed what does that mean that means that someone forged a deed they altered which is a felony penal code one one oh was was your because we had a guy on earlier whose home was sold behind his back to a straw buyer, and, and they, they, they sold his deed, and he didn't know it, and then they came and they evicted him. That's different. This similar. In my case, they didn't do an eviction. They bypassed the whole eviction process. In other words, when you, uh, if you buy someone's home, the way you take possession is a civil process called unlawful detainer, which takes anywhere from 30 days to 60 days. But in my case, the gangster just came with he bribed the sheriff and seized my home. Who bribed the sheriff? Julio Bayless. Who's he? He's an El Salvadoran gangster from El Salvador. And he bought the forged deed way below value. And then. Who'd he buy it from? Somebody at the bank? He bought it from Petit Gold. And I have a lawsuit pending. And A gold company? No, his name is Gold, G O E L. Oh, okay. It's an Indian name. And his name Petit. What was he doing with your deed? He got the deed from a, uh, a loan that he made to me, but then he altered it afterwards oh i see and he sold it to this other guy gotcha. I... because he couldn't evict me legally he seized my home illegally so you you your half million dollar house is gone correct and then they bulldoze it down and then i'm on september 30th i come here i see that's that's terrible that happened yeah. just this summer just this summer correct and you couldn't do anything to stop it well you do with sheriff is corrupt Who which is which sheriff are you talking about the sheriff the Altadena Sheriff Station. How do you know? And how do you know the sheriff got bribed? Got bribed with money, or he got bribed with influence? Because how does the sheriff stand by and let a gangster take six trucks of all your personal belongings, loot it, steal it, and trash it, and then board up your house and then have it bulldozed down with no court paper? And I've been there 35 years, and I filed a quiet title action before and serve him. All right. Thank you for your story. Thank you. All right. There you all go. Right. We're gonna take a break, and we're gonna come back. More with you Occupy here. LA. It's nice here, I keep telling you. Oh, oh, how's it different from the five feet away I am? I don't know. I'm in the jet stream here. No, I'm in the same jet stream. You're a little oh. higher. Yeah, you tell me. More ways than one. Yeah, all right. Uh, it's the uh, John and Ken Show here. We'll be back with more of the people at Occupy LA here in Los Angeles, downtown, in front of City Hall, KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. All right, John and Ken Show, KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. We took the show today to Occupy L.A. 
All the Occupy movements in the news, of course, although the news is getting a little more negative these days because of some of these to remove the uh, demonstrators. Ted Hayes is here, hasn't been on the show in probably a few years, to talk to us about what how he sees all this. He's, uh, oh. Hi, Ted. Welcome back to the show. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it allowing me to voice my opinions. So what is your opinion of this and your your ideas for it? You know, I was doing this 26 years ago. We used to come here with the homeless, not because we wanted to camp out, but we had no other place to go, and we were chased off, you know, by the police or they turned the water sprinklers on. So we, saw, we had to occupy different places around the city, and we were saying what these young people are saying, that there is corruption in Wall Street and the government, and we, but we had plans. And what I want to do here tonight is make a proposal to the body as to what they can do to give themselves some moral rectitude so that they can address Wall Street and the corrupt government. Because if they cannot address the homeless, the condition at the bottom of our society, they're just as bad as not worse than Wall Street. So what's your proposal? My proposal first is to make them aware. We want them to march on the 19th of this month, November. We want the thousands of them to march to Skid Row to put the attention on the bottom of the world. It's kind of like mirroring the polar opposite of what Skid Row is to their faces. And then we have some other plans to do that. On the 12th, we are with the sons and daughters of the slaves, black folks, it was built on our backs as slaves. Wall Street is built on our backs. The majority of the homeless, 60%, are the sons and daughters of the slaves. So we're going to march with the slave ship float from Skid Row, Wall Street, Skid Row, up here to Spring Street, and we're going to talk to these young people about the history of our fight as sons and daughters of the slaves against Wall Street corruption and big government and so forth ever since we've been in this country. Yeah, I know you've been uh, fighting homeless as long as I can remember being in L.A., Yes, sir. Uh, many, many years. Have you seen anything get better or has it gotten worse? It has gotten worse, and that's because of poor leadership within the government, the city, county, state, and federal government. That is why. And we, in fact, we went, remember I used to go to city, remember when we occupied yeah. city council chambers? Remember yeah, that that's day? that's right. Yeah. We were saying to them then, why don't you open up land, put porta potties, and put up some domes, and let the homeless go there and get them off the, 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 the indignity of these sidewalks. Right. They rejected it, okay? But when a bunch of white kids come up here with their allies, okay, <laughs> and their iPods and things, okay? No, I'm not putting it down. I salute you, actually. And, and, and when they come up here, they acquiesce and do a very dumb thing, a very hypocritical thing. Why would they let these people come? When the homeless came, they chased us away. They've got to answer that. And I think Mr. Villagarosa and the city council is in serious trouble because they cannot make these people leave. The reason why they can't make them leave because when they came here, they broke the law. They were criminals. But now they invited the criminals to stay. So how can they in court force them to leave? They can't. It's like if you invite me to your house, John, say, Ted, there's a, there's a couch. Go to sleep, brother, for a few days. Then I say, you know, John, I'm not leaving. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to be inviting you in then. But, folks, <laughs> you get the point. And, the mayor, and, see, and I think if they accept my proposal and allow me to become their servant, because I know how to do this. You guys know I know how to yeah, do this. Yeah, you've worked on this a long time. Long time. And you've worked and with many governments. this elderly gentleman do that with them, what we will do then is we can negotiate with the city council and the county and everybody. We want the National Homeless Plan implemented that Mr. Hayes and the homeless people put before you a long time ago. We want that done. Suddenly now, not only do we have critical mass and agreeing on something, but we have a plan. The reason that the, 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 the uh, mayor of Atlanta was being questioned today on CNN, and among other things, reasons, he gave several reasons why he shut the, um, the, uh, the, the community down. But he said the primary reason was they didn't have a leader. They had no one to talk to. They wanted to address their issues, but no one was willing to take the heat within the body to stand up and say, you know what, guys, I'm going to be the leader and I will represent us. Oh, who do you think you are? Well, the mayor says, you know what, they have no leader, we can't talk to you. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. I don't, I don't know who they do. Well, whenever Villaraigosa decides to kick everybody off, I don't know who's, who he's going to negotiate with. Uh, hopefully, God willing, hopefully, if the body accepts my proposal and my eldership, he will have to negotiate with me on their behalf. If they accept it. All right. So you are offering yourself as a leader of this Occupy LA group. I'm offering myself as a servant leader. I can only do it if they allow me and they take the vote and there's enough consensus to say, you know what, we're going to trust that old guy. We think he knows what he's talking about. Otherwise, what do you see happening here? What I see happening here is otherwise is that it's going to be very ugly for LAPD primarily. Yeah. 
because they're going to have to come in here and move these folks. And some of them are going to say, you know what, we don't want the trouble, go somewhere else. Others going to say, we want the We're fight. We're not going, right. We want the fight. We want the lawsuits. And see, I think, I think that my ideas, if allowed by this body to be presented properly, I think we can resolve this matter without a big blow-up. In fact, one of the things that could happen if they want to, why don't they open up some land, a lot of vacant land around here, open up for the homeless people, get them off those sidewalks, and stop making them taking down their tents. And some of these people will move in with them, so it's not just homeless people, but it's these young soldiers of justice and peace and love that will amalgamate with the homeless people themselves. And now we've got a movement, and then the other bodies around the country will follow our example, and suddenly we have moral rectitude. Wow, right, I'm ready to march with you. All right, <laughs> very good. It. Thank you for the All right. time, sir. Very right, good. Ted Hayes, Hayes there wants you go. to offer himself Thanks. to help lead this movement to the next level, and he particularly thinks that it should start with the homeless, the bottom of the 99%, I guess you could put it that way. All right, what we're going to do at 6 o'clock, we're going to start taking calls from the audience because we will have spent three hours out here talking to people at Occupy LA, and we want to see what kind of response. Yeah, uh, but we want to see what you make of uh, everybody, uh, every, everything we've talked about so far and all the people that you've heard since 3 o'clock because we've talked to you know probably a couple of dozen people over the last, uh, what time is it, by the it's way? It's almost 5.30. Uh, I think my watch stopped. Yeah. All right, all right so uh, the toll-free number, and we'll get to that after 6 o'clock, of course, will also be on Channel 5. They're here, too. 1-800-520-1534. It's the John and Ken Show in downtown L.A. outside of City Hall. Yep, we're here right in the middle of Occupy L.A. to bring it to you. More coming up. Oh, uh, works better over there? If I stand by the black garbage can, the microphone works. Hey! I don't know, now you're repeating. John Cobalt and Ken Shampoo. And I'm getting echo in my headphone size. So make that your head's going to explode. All right, we will be on Channel 5 next hour. They are here with the setup uh, in about an hour from now. You'll see what we've been seeing for the last uh, three hours or so over at the Occupy LA movement here in downtown LA. And, uh,. I tell you, I I don't know where this is going to go, but it, the whole thing has changed. When we first got here, and John walked up to interview some people, you were mobbed yeah. between TV and some of the people here at the <laughs> demonstration, and then just the way the back and forth went. It's interesting now that two and a half hours later, we're not the novelty we were when we got here well, anymore. <laughs> so some of the some of the crowd was uh, hostile at first, and then I said. Look, you got a chance to talk on the radio. You know, we, we have something of value here. You can get a few minutes on the radio. And I said, you got to let people speak one by one. Yeah, I saw and you organized it nicely during I the break about if you're going to chant and yell and bang drums. and No one's going to hear each individual. And the whole purpose here was to see what why people are here. I mean, because it's, it's easy to stereotype one way or the other. You can pick three people who know how to speak. Oh, thank you. People donating water. Very good. Would you like to talk on the air? Uh, if you give us water, we'll put you uh, on the radio. Hey, I was just standing by his tent, which says... Um, was this your tent here? No, this orange one behind the, the, oh, with the writing on it. Let me see. 99% oh. I am God. No games in love. Be a real person. Do unto others as you have them do to you. Uh, what's your name? Larry. Larry, what are you, what are you doing here? I'm occupying with the rest of the people here fighting for a cause. It's justice. What, what specifically? I'm fighting for schools, the money to come back, the government to stop doing the evil that they're doing, and also... Bring back the Why don't you bring them over here? Come, on, come over here. Cause, yeah. We work better by the black garbage can. Yeah, now, for some reason, that's a good thing. <laughs> well, you are, you, are you homeless? I ended up homeless because of a certain incident. I was staying with a friend, short and simple, and City Hall intervened because it was a first mortgage. And when did that happen? Uh, it was oh nine, and I've had places off and on. But you came here. You told me on the seventh of October. You've been here since. I've been here since October. Yes. How does that? Uh, how does that work each night? What's it like being here? It's an adventure. I mean, there's different people, different attitudes, different aspects, different wisdom, um, and different spiritual aspects of of everybody. It's what do you What do you do all day? Well, what we do all day, we contemplate on what we need to do. We think about the issues at hand of what the government's doing. We think about how we need to take care of each other as unity, um, how we need to unite, how we need to set an example. We go to General Assembly every night at 7 p.m., and we talk about the issues of the day. You talked, uh, you mentioned just a minute ago about the evil the government is doing. What, what specific evil? 
they're, there's a lot of it. They're spending all the certain, uh, they're spending all the money that we make on our tax dollars that we give them, and they're wasting it. They're swindling it on war. They're using it on the war against drugs. They're using it on certain things that doesn't need to be used on, like city hall, for instance, is a part of it as well. I mean, I'm not against nobody. I'm just against the, what they're doing. I'm against the people that are doing that because it's making everybody poor, including everybody, including the talk radios. I mean, money is scarce, and businesses I've done seen about over 10 businesses, small businesses and medium businesses, just crashed and had to sell out. Now, do you work? Do you have education and training? I do have education. I have my GED. I did go to school and finish. Um, I do work when I can find a job. But right now, it's really terrible because ever since 2009, since the ending of 2009, it's gotten really worse. What kind Way of work worse. would you want to do? I would want to be a musician. That's what I do. I sing and I write my own songs. And if I couldn't get that, I would probably do construction because I'm good at building things. What are you living off of now? I'm living off of nothing but just getting by right now and whatever job comes my way part-time. Do you have any family that would help you? I have family, but right now they're just as poor as I am. My dad's out of work. He just recently got laid off last year. Now, where do you think this is going to go? If the mayor says something like he did yesterday, this can't stay here indefinitely, what do you think happens if they tell you people either got to go or move? Then we would relocate and keep fighting. You would do that, though. You would willingly relocate. You're not going to throw uh, no, I'm plates not gonna, and skillets? No, I'm not going to end up getting myself shot by LAPD or any other law enforcement. That would be stupid and foolish. Why fight the law and, and piss them off even worse, more mad than they already are? Do you think there's general agreement here about what everybody wants, or it's all different voices? Yes, I've been told many time by many of times by certain officials in City Hall that they are willing to work with us, and they are trying to help us out, as well as they have acknowledged a lot of stuff in the United States, as well as the world. And they know this is big, and they know that everybody's tired. Even people in City Hall are tired, because the people that work for City Hall are part of us as well, as well as y'all. What, what would you consider to be a victory so that you guys could pack up and leave? The victory that we would have to see is some major stuff that we have already talked about and asked City Hall, like money to come in, more funding for schools, more jobs. That would be a big number one was jobs and funding for schools. And then funding for places that need the funding, like Skid Row. There was a million dollars taken away from Skid Row that City Hall or some company, corporation was going to give, and they didn't give it. They gave it to the wrong people. A million dollars. All right, thanks for talking to us. We're getting the feedback. Now, this is unbelievable echo. You, you could fix that, Tony. Uh, we would appreciate it. All right, there we and, go. Okay. It was, it, we were getting crazy feedback in our headphones and uh, echo and all that. All right, uh, we are here at Occupy LA. And after 6 o'clock, we're going to take, uh, take your phone calls. Your reaction to the three hours that we have spent here at 1 800 520 1534, it'll be your chance to speak unfiltered. Whether you like what you heard or you know, on the small chance, right, that you didn't like what you heard, we will talk to you coming up after uh, 6 o'clock. John and Ken Show, KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. John and Ken Show, John Cobell and Ken Shampoo, and we're broadcasting from Occupy LA. 534 tents, we were told at 3 o'clock, we're. Uh, set up on the City Hall lawn, and it, it looks like hundreds of tents from here. No, during the break, I counted them all. There's actually 531. Was that right? Three tents taken down? Uh, maybe three people left. Uh, it is a, an amazing sight, if you haven't seen it. That's why we brought the show here today, because most of our listeners are not going to be part of the Occupy movement or even to see, which is something I talked about yesterday, in that whether they break up this encampment or not doesn't really affect most people's lives, if you think about it, because they don't come here. They're not bothered by it. And this is not, looking around, a residential section. These are office buildings at City Hall. And isn't it great if they bother the city council? A bunch of clowns anyway. <laughs> Does it really matter whether they stay here or they go? I mean, they're destroying the lawn. Yeah, the lawn, you know. Now you're going to sound like Bob Dole. Get off my lawn. Hey, that's right. It is our lawn. Well, I know that. But uh, I just... I just believe I, from, from the point of view, we had a guest on earlier, and he kind of struck on something. He's like, well, Vera Gosa came out here early on in the Occupy movement, and he handed out the rain jackets, and he was very sympathetic, and he talked to people. And then yesterday, he's suddenly saying, well, this can't go on indefinitely, and maybe we have to move them. And that guy, well, was, was a, his opinion was he was only saying that because some of the other big city mayors are starting to move 
on the encampment. So maybe Villar decides, well, politically, that's the right thing to do. It reminded me of his whole position in the illegal alien debate years ago. And remember the big march that they did? And he left the country during the yeah. MacArthur Park melee and all that. The, the, the guy made a good point that Villar is a politician in the end. He can't believe anything he says or any position he takes. It could change five minutes later. Well, I, I, I guess, you know, there's no way to predict things. If, if you let people stay, you know, for weeks and months and they really get entrenched, is there any hope of ever dislodging them? At some point, do they feel they have a legal right to the land? You know, what's, how's their behavior going to be as the weeks and months go by? Will we be looking they, at this in 2015? No, I mean, are they going <laughs> to, you know, you don't know. I mean, every Occupy movement seems to have a different personality. Some Occupy movements seem to be a little more tense and edgy. And maybe there's some weapons. Obviously, in, in Oakland, they went berserk. Well, that's yeah, why I, the mayor it, shut down Oakland, claiming yeah. there was a sex assault. Yeah. There was another beating. Yeah. There was, I mean, I haven't heard those kinds of stories here. I heard something this morning about a possible gun or a knife. But the police are here. They're all lined up on the sidewalk. The demonstrators talk yeah. to them. I mean, if you're, if you're a mayor and you have to put yourself in a mayor's position, if things are starting to get out of hand and you have one sexual assault, one beating, you know, you start to see you know, the, the, feces. The, the poop and, you know, the vomit, all that. You don't, it doesn't know, smell you don't know great. Where, right. It doesn't it, smell great here, but well, I don't know. It smells like seen, pot everywhere. I mean, I, I got yeah. a headache from breathing in all Right. That. And there's some people you can have not bathe, but I wouldn't say there's feces everywhere. No, I haven't, I haven't everywhere. seen any. I haven't seen any vomit. No vomit, no feces so far. Although, you know, we have stuck to a, a pretty limited area here. Only because Just, we couldn't, with the limitations with the microphones and the uh, signal, we so couldn't go all the way if through. If you're a mayor, you don't want it to lapse into anarchy, and then somebody says, hey, you know, uh, you saw one night they had a sex assault, they had a beating, and you didn't do anything about it. Why didn't you do anything about it when right. things start to unravel? So you're, you're damned either way. Right. And and the same thing with, if you know, if you have some an outbreak of typhoid, I'm just making that up because of the health conditions here. Again, that's on your hands as well. Every, what, you just, what, Ray just stepped on something. Oh, he, he did? Right. Some poo? Uh, well, there's been a lot of dogs walking around. Too, human so. poo or dog poo? Can we do a little, de Ray doesn't know. <laughs> he's he's yeah. wiping his foot Look, on the grass here. The hope of Villar and this whole city council, which has been sympathetic to this movement, is Eventually, the media stops covering them. Maybe they get tired of being here and they go. That's how it ends peacefully. Whether or not, do you think there's actually somebody leaning on the law and saying, well, we're going to fix that city hall lawn. It looks like a no, disgrace. I, I don't believe that. No, I don't, it is, I don't think it's about a, the lawn. I, I think it's about the law really putting his finger in the wind and looking at the other mayors. Because, you know, you look a lot tougher when you get the police evicting people. And yeah, but today she's getting booed, that mayor of Oakland, not by everybody, but there's a crowd on the cable networks well, and from the uh, activist groups who are saying she was way over the top. That's police brutality. They shouldn't do that. And, and seriously, with that Iraqi vet hurt, he's become big news with the fractured skull. Oh, sure. I mean, you're going to have a random injury, though, once the police move in and start firing stuff. But, but there, an Iraqi war vet, that, uh, that's, that's just bad luck. That was you know, really <laughs> bad luck. I don't the think the cops Oakland. decided, you know, we're going we're gonna to nail the Iraqi war vet in the skull. No, but like you brain. like to say, that becomes the symbol. That guy becomes... The rallying cry for that, those who say you shouldn't have done this. That's that's the bad luck. And she was that, really first. They did some stuff in Atlanta. There's been a couple uh, of other cities that have moved the encampments off. Oakland's grabbing the news. Nothing works perfectly. And, and, and when you're a mayor in a hot-button situation like this, you're going to piss off a lot of people one way or the other. You're always going to get claims of police brutality, whether they exist or not. And people who make those claims are always going to get airtime, whether they're telling the truth or not. Now, you and I have talked about this, we did yesterday, and it's sort of like, on the other hand, while they can stay here, and they might stay here for, more, for months more, we've certainly got the weather for it, what is their next step? Because they got to think about that. And it's cool to be I, out here. I mean, I was talking to somebody off the air, and I said, well, the trouble is, I think these people believe they now have a sense of purpose in life. There's a meaning to every day yeah. when they wake up. Oh, certainly. Whether or not yeah. you and I understand it doesn't matter. And I don't think a lot of these people had that before they joined this group. No. So now they do, and that that's powerful for them because they have they have new friends. And if and my microphone. Yeah, they, 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 they have new friends, and they've, they've got something to do every and day. And if there's enough donations, they get enough to eat, they but, can subsist. Why leave? Because this is something to do, well, and it feels important. Now, what, what matters is the next wave, if there's a next wave. Because I don't think these people... You think people it's going to grow, you mean? Or? Well, if there's a next wave of people who think either they're opportunists, they're true believers, but they can, they've can they got uh, leadership skills, they have organizing skills, they have a plan, they're going to go specifically to Washington, D.C. and you know start 
I don't know, sleeping on the White House lawn, just for a, a crazy example. You know what I'm saying? You, you, no. you, you can't stand here forever and be effective. No, well, you and, I know, and I don't know if these people collectively are going to be effective for no. the second step. Now, you said that maybe, like the Tea Party people, they have to become a part somehow of the Democratic Party because that seems to be who they're more closely aligned with and maybe elect a couple of people who are talking on a national level the kind of change that they want to see, maybe. Whether it's campaign oh. finance reform, banking regulation, I don't know. But some of the, some that's, of the, that's going to have an effect. That's where it has to go. And it sounds like, well, we don't want to become part of the government we hate right now. But what else are you going to do? No, there, there, there aren't any other options. You, you could stand here forever, but nothing changes. And maybe you don't, you know, maybe that's not your purpose. Maybe your purpose is to enjoy the community here. The last but, poll but, I saw... 50-some-odd percent of the country, the majority, was neutral about this. It had about 20 percent, yeah, I support Occupy, and 20 percent, no, they're, they're idiots. That's Those, about the same as the Tea Party numbers from I remember. Yeah. The, that's the, the, the Tea because, Party had about 19, 20 percent of the country's support. Yeah, and that's generally the, you know, the far right and the far left wings of the country. And, that, and the that's people sit like in the middle, and they, they wait to see what happens. I think some of the people here, uh, the, the, the smarter people who are able to, argue cogently mm -hmm. are, are picking a, picking on a lot of right issues and a lot of right themes you know I, I i the wall street guys and the banking guys and the mortgage guys they've been skating for three years now yeah they've i mean let, we, they've we, like we, three years of uh, destruction in their wake and they're doing fine and people, a lot of people aren't no we spend a lot of time on our show like beating on public employee unions and the fact that we're overtaxed you and I don't beat as much on the corporate greed but we certainly talked about it during the mortgage meltdown we talked about the countrywide we talked about the, the greed and the, the need to continue to run up mortgages, even though a lot of people in that business knew they were fake, they were phony, that they were not going to last, that they were going to melt down. But well, they, they continued because big money was to be made today. Well, the, the mortgage companies could give a mortgage to somebody who is broke, and then they'll sell that mortgage to another financial institution, and they make the money for facilitating the mortgage. They don't care if the guy can't pay the bill a year later. It doesn't matter. They no longer own that mortgage. Somebody else does. That's right. And, and then you, you, get, and you do what the, the countrywide people did. You sell the stock because you know in a year it's probably going to completely melt down, and you cash out, and you collect your, your riches today because you don't give a crap they, about what happens a year from now. And most of them did it and got away with it, and much of what they did was legal. And... Uh, people are now. But realizing. there weren't a heck of a lot of prosecutions out of that, were there? No, because much of, because much of what they did was legal. There weren't any laws against it. Even the Obama said this a few weeks ago. He said they didn't. They, there weren't any laws. You know, the Bush administration and the Clinton administration had tossed overboard a lot of the laws that would have regulated this behavior back in the 1990s into the early 2000s. So it was, you know, it was a casino. So, all right, when we come back, numbers 1-800-520-1-KFI, 1-800-520-1-KFI. If you were lucky enough to hear uh, a good piece of the show and you want to comment on what you heard or you have any general comments about the whole Occupy LA movement based on what you know and what you've seen, 1-800-520-1-KFI. John and Ken Show, Terry Realmer has the news. KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. John and Ken Show, John Cobell and Ken Shampo. Yeah, we are at Occupy LA downtown. Actually, at this moment, I'm across the street because, wow, I was getting too high in that park. And plus, when we talk to people, we get surrounded in a circle that made me claustrophobic. I actually got ill before. I couldn't stay in that circle that was encompassing John when they were crushing in on him the first hour or two. But, of course, we'll be on Channel 5 with the simulcast coming up at 640. I'm actually looking at the truck across the street, so we'll talk to Mike Ullman and it will be about Occupy LA. I've gotten a good three hours of a contact high here, so I'm pretty happy. Yeah, you know, you've been in a good mood, and I think uh, you know why. I, Are you about to roll out a tent? Huh? I, you know what? It's, it's um, there isn't any room. There's there's just no real estate left to pitch a tent here. No, one of the promotions and guys I, was just saying to me, this probably looks like your apartment in your old radio days when you were, uh, you know, before you were married. Close. The slob house you used to live in. Yeah, not not that far from it. Uh, we're going to take some phone calls here. Clay, do we have people? Uh, no, we do. Up? We have 1-800-520-1534. Uh, you can call and react to the people that we have talked to these three hours. It's your opportunity either for or against to tell us what you think. We're going to start with a guy named Julian. Hello? Julian, you're on with Johnny. Oh, hey, guys. How's it going? Good. 
like it. Um, I, yeah, I've been listening. I've been uh, fortunate to listen for the first two hours, and um, I agree with a lot of the basic premises of what uh, these Occupy people are saying, but it, the message has now just gotten, is getting lost, and I believe if they continue this way, we'll get lost. I, I, I agree with you guys. I don't see what they're getting done by just sitting in front of City Hall all day. It's, it's, it's not really doing anything to make people change their minds other than just annoy people in the general vicinity. Now, I uh, think the idea, if there is one, is to inspire the people that are not here to rise up and affect change somehow. How that's done, I'm not sure. Kick well, people out of office, there, recall people. There, there's no, there's no specific agenda here. Uh, however, the, I assume this got started through social media, and so one guy shows up, and then another one, and another one, and another one, and a woman shows up, and and you have people randomly coming here, and they've all got different ideas, and, and some of them have suffered some kind of injustice. We talked with at least two people who claim their homes were illegally foreclosed upon and they were illegally evicted you know there's people like that who say they got screwed by the system we have no way of knowing if they're telling the truth or not whether their story is accurate or not but that's what that's the story they're selling here and, and it's, it's really it's really a random collection of people on the younger side mostly poor um, and and they've all got something I mean some of them are obviously lunatics and possibly schizophrenic and uh, others are, are fairly rational and uh, some of them uh, are right about the issues but yeah it goes back to all right you're standing in LA looking at Viragosa's office how does this translate into changing the power structure in Washington New York it doesn't and here's the question I have how important do you think the media coverage is of all this and some would say very important because most people don't come here they don't talk to these people they don't know what they want and I've watched it shift since it started on Wall Street over a month ago actually almost two months ago it seems like to, at the beginning, it was interesting. Look at these people camping out, demonstrating against Wall Street. Then for a while, the angle was, what do they want? Nobody understands their message. What do they want? This is just a general collection well, of the stories I saw. Well, it, then it kind of shifted in their favor, where it was about, well, yeah, they're, they're angry about corporate greed and the whole financial meltdown from three years ago that still hasn't been solved. And people order. don't know what their future is going to look like because they can't understand exactly where this no. economy is headed. But now... I have to say, this week, all the coverage is about wrecking the camps, taking down the camps, like in Oakland and Atlanta, and discussions here in L.A. Well, the of saying you can't stay here forever. The coverage depends on whatever producer or news director, whatever their idea of the day is. Correct. You know, every day they got to put out uh, one news cast, or in some cases, you know, five or six news cast, and they need to... Uh, yeah. It's, it's like a book. Chapter one is, who the hell are these people? Number two, uh, we don't understand what they are what they say. Number you three know? is, all right, we kind of understand what they say, and they're a diverse group of protesters. Right. But now the chapter is, all right, it almost seems like the media is well, playing into the to the well, mayors and the politicians. Maybe it's time to shut this down. Well, yeah, because they're they're on the side of conflict. So what the con the conflict is the mayor and the police department saying enough of the vomit, enough of the feces, so uh, you have to understand the the media animal, especially in television. It's it's run by producers who have an idea, and if they did one kind of story on, they're not going to do the story. They're not going to do the same story on Tuesday or Wednesday. They're going to make up angles. And if you have 500 people here, you can find three or four people who justify your, your angle of the day. And I think you're right. And I think what you're cutting out a lot. I, I think you're right, but I think it's also this. Because I've noticed since we've been here, almost every TV TV station is here. I think they send at least somebody every day yeah. to see if something happens, but it may not ever make the news. Yeah. Sometimes you have to do that in this business. You might send a reporter out, and they may come back and say, "Oh, I got this story." And the, you're right. The editor, you know, the guy in charge says, "Ah, it's not good enough for not good enough." Cut. Yeah. But be there just in case a violence breaks out, or so, the, the, there's a good point that somebody makes, and that day becomes a big day. Somebody famous shows up, stuff like that. So what, once you get past. You know, the major story ideas. I mean, if I was a news producer, I'd be doing the same thing. I'd be, you know, you first you say, God, it looks like a bunch of dirty hippies. It's like, oh, hey, maybe they're not dirty hippies. Uh, let's talk to them and see if any of them are, are intelligent. Oh, a few of them are kind of intelligent and interesting. So put them on. You know, third day is like, wow, they're still sitting around here. This seems unfocused. Where's this going to go? What's the next chapter here? We're getting bored. By fourth day, it's like, oh, here come the police. Oh, now we're going to have a big riot party. And, you know, that that's how the media business works. They need a new angle every day. They're not really interested in, in plumbing the depths of these people's souls. 
It's whatever fits the you know minute and fifteen second entertainment package. Yeah, that but, they have to know, put quite on. honestly, we've talked to quite a few people this afternoon, and a lot of what they want is pretty generic. It's pretty broad based, and if it were to happen, the change that they want to affect, it's going to take quite almost an overthrow of, of the institutions that run this country now. And you and I don't deny that the corporations have a lot of influence. I mean, basically, your governments are run by the public employee unions and the corporations because they give all the money to the politicians that run, the Tony Villars and the Jerry Browns and the Obamas. That's yeah. who's in charge. Well, we don't deny that. Well, that's We the spend law. a lot of time beating on the unions, but we recognize that the corporations... The only reason I have a lesser problem with the corporations is twofold. A... They are in the private industry. B, they do employ people. And C, if you invest in them, you can make money on them, too. What can I get at public employees? Tell me that. I mean, I mean uh, you know, except for maybe they fix a road. I uh, No, I mean, 80% of the public works for uh, a large corporation. They do. 80%? Everybody, really? Yeah, yeah small, small businesses only provide 20% of the jobs. I thought they were the backbone of America. No, before. that's just uh, Chamber of Commerce, BS and gas. But really, I, uh, corporations, corporations rule. And... You know, you, you always have to go to what the law is. Supreme Court says a corporation is a person, therefore has a First Amendment right of speech, and they have decided that contributing to a political campaign is a form of free speech. Yeah, well, I understand that perspective. It is bizarre in that a corporation is much larger than a person, and by and of itself can have a lot more influence. That's a large group oh, of people. It's a monster. That, I think that decision leads to corruption, but that's their decision. And so corporate funding of politics is never going away unless there is a, a radical rewriting of the Constitution. All right. Uh, we're going to uh, continue to take your calls, 1-800-520-1534. We'll be on Channel 5 in about 25 minutes with the nightly simulcast. It's the Johnny Kent Show. We are at Occupy L.A. in downtown checking out the, what did you say, 500 tents, John? Something. 534 was right. the LAPD number at 3 o'clock. You're kind of the rain man. Why don't you go count during the break? <laughs> and, no. poke, and poke your head in. High enough. All right. More coming up. John and Ken Show, KFI AM 640. More stimulating talk radio. John and Ken Show. John Cobelt and <laughs> Ken Shampo. We're at Occupy LA, downtown in front of City Hall. 534 tents behind us. Uh, we're going to be on Channel 5, I guess, in about uh, 20 minutes to talk with Michael Ullman. So if you want to see us and what the Occupy LA protesters look like, Channel 5, KTLA, in 20 minutes. You know, I'm across the street near a bus station, and wow. What a whiff of a joint I just got. I'm, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm woozy. Is that a good spot? Yeah, there's a guy who just went by and he was smiling at me because he's, he's lit up. I haven't been this high in 25 years. I, uh, um, <laughs> must be medical marijuana law. Yeah. Uh, actually, oh, I had a little ache this morning in my shoulder. It's gone. See? I, I feel great. It's magic. Uh, I'll talk to you. Uh, we're going to take more of your calls. 1 uh, 800 5201 KFI. But I want to spend a, a minute here with, uh, with Nazareth. He's on the Resource Committee of Occupy LA. And he, he wanted to come on the air because he felt that because Occupy LA doesn't have a single face, uh, a single leader that's identifiable, he, he understands that, that people watching and listening may, may be confused as to you know what, what, what the point of the whole protest is. So we got Nazareth. Uh, explain, explain. What what's, what's you think the purpose is here? Well, uh, our main purpose here is to show that uh, the people divided uh, will not stand and the people united will be able to make some impact on the present situation with our own government, which we feel strongly needs to be taken back due to the fact that uh, we uh, clearly see a problem with Wall Street and corporate uh, America having too much of a... a power over uh, through lobbying uh, in Congress, the House, House of Representatives, the President himself, and uh, all of these other um, powers that are, are uh, affecting uh, the decision making of our leaders in Congress. Now, you were telling me off the air about your General Assembly and that you're trying to put together a governing committee of sorts, some kind of structure. How's that going? Well, what we're doing now is exercising our First Amendment right to assemble. And we're trying to teach the people that come here about what it is to be sovereign uh, on a sovereign nation. Uh, and we're trying to show them how to sustain themselves in an environmentally eco-friendly manner. Um, and you could do that individually in a single family dwelling or as a communal setting. Um, so we're going to be expanding. We're going to... Um, we're going to tell the public about our expansion efforts uh, that will have the blessing of the state rangers as well as the Los Angeles Police Department 
so that we can uh, begin to grow our own food and be on really self-sustaining. You're talking about moving maybe to a larger area that's more conducive? You're going to expand. You're going to expand beyond here? Beyond here, yeah. What if they make you move? What do you think the level of resistance may be? Oh, I think it'll be, um, I think it'll be real peaceful, but I, I'm sure it'll move to another area. I mean, it's not going to die out. So you don't want to become Oakland? Excuse me? You don't want to become the next Oakland where, you know, they had violence. I heard and that Oakland, uh, as a result of that, was some um, USMCs came in and uh, helped uh, further their cause at that point in time uh, in a peaceful manner, I heard. Uh, where the mayor and everybody else, the powers to be, were very re responsive and uh, helpful of the situation and facilitated their uh, demands at that point in time. All right, Hazard, thank you for coming on. Yeah, All right, from the Resource Committee. Well, yeah. the last word I had on Oakland goes as follows. They're allowing them to hang out in the plaza by day, but after 10 p.m., they don't want anybody setting up overnight. Now, what happened last night is one tent went up. Did you see that story? No, I didn't. What they did last night is they broke the fences down that the police had put up because they want to um, disinfect the area. Yeah. And they broke them down. But they most of them did leave at 10. They went on some kind of march. But supposedly one tent was set up. Tonight's a different night. One it protest was, tent. It was, it was like one, a symbolic One F you to the mayor. No, I don't know. That was this morning and midday that I learned all this. I don't know if it's changed. And we'll see what happens tonight in Oakland. Because, again, the talk was we want to retake the place and put the 100 or so tents we had up there, back up there, because we deserve to put them up there. Do we have another call, Yeah, Clay? we have Ashton. Ashton. Hi, you guys. What do you think? Hi. Well, I totally agree with the last caller that you just had, that these people are out there fighting. They're, they're, not, they're not part of the 99%. They're part of the percent that, you know, they're not working. They don't have jobs. They're sitting out there smoking all day, and I don't understand what they have to complain about because they're the ones who put themselves in this situation. It's not... It's not the government that they have to thank for it. Like the guy who said that he, you know, had higher education. I'm sorry, but a GED doesn't cut it. He yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I remember him. He got a, he had yeah, a GED and he wanted to be a musician, and he's he's looking for a job. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of people. Some people are drifters, and they have kind of a utopian idea of the way the world should be, and the, the world is never going to be the way you personally want it. You have to make accommodations to that. But well, the world's never going to change. Uh, because you know we got we got six billion people, and every one of us have has a different impression of how the world ought to be. So. Look, you know what we've learned today from being here. No matter what some of the media tries to tell you that this is a diverse group of occupiers, these people do not like. They're not capitalists. That's pretty clear to me. They're not into capitalism. Um, no, I. It's... Which most of America embraces to some level and some extent. Well, you know, I you, mean, talk you, to you people do that, have to work. You talk to people that believe in free housing, that somehow we should have communal housing, or I guess what, some government entity regulates it, but everybody's entitled to live rent free. I'm, there are very few countries where you don't have to work. You do have to work. Now, in a place like Greece, well, you only have to work for about 10 minutes, and then they give you a lifetime pension. I don't think but, these people believe that you don't have to work, but I believe they should be, it should be more communal and not corporate-based is what they want. I mean, as you described it, small businesses before would be part of the mix. They really hate the large corporate entities with the greedy board of directors and everything's driven towards the stock market and Wall Street. All decisions go that way. Whatever you have to do to get the price of the stock higher, you do it. I don't care whose throat you cut, that's what you do. I don't, these people don't like that. They don't believe that the, the country should operate that way. I don't think they believe, John, though, that nobody should have to work. We should all be able to sit, grow vegetables, and be given what we need and where we need to live. Well, well I just ran into a couple of guys who, doesn't, who don't think that anyone should own property. And, and then rent it out. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know I know landlords. That, that. You know, that, that's a few of them. That's not all of them. I have a guy standing next to me who's uh, one of these uh, suit and tie protesters. He's got a sign that says, end tax giveaways to corporations. They are not people. Well, Supreme Court says they are people, at least when it comes to uh, campaign contributions. What's your name? My name is Brian Seligman. I'm uh, disabled right now, but I'm a computer engineer in my past life. And... What's your Thank purpose you in being here? My purpose is to call attention to a lot of inequality and um, a, a lot of economic issues and personal um, rights issues. How, how would you end this inequality? The 1% and the 99%, just to go with that generic formula here. What's, what's the big idea? For me, would be to ideally have the one percent 
take at least half of their $2 trillion out of the bank and open some factories and give people jobs so that we would be able to work and then we would be able to pay payroll taxes, income taxes, and sales taxes, which would enable the government to keep police and firemen and health. All right. Here's the thing on that. All right. I'm, I'm just being realistic here. And I'm going to make up these numbers, but you'll get the point. Guy opens a factory in China, pays all the Chinese workers two bucks an hour. Nobody can work in America for two bucks, two bucks an hour. It's got to be six bucks an hour. Well, right then, your labor costs have tripled, which means whatever little widget you're making is going to be more expensive. Therefore, it's not going to sell on the market. What do you do? I mean, we get we got probably two, three billion people who are in poverty. They'll always work for pennies and nickels. Uh, I, I, I don't know how an American company can survive. I mean, Solyndra is a great example. If you've kept track of that, the, uh, the, the solar tube manufacturer... They could not compete with the with the cheap prices that Chinese factories uh, were. They couldn't compete with the cheap prices of manufacturing at those Chinese factories. Actually, I tend to disagree with a bit of that. I know the Chinese labor is cheaper, but you've also got transportation costs. You've also got administrative people and service people that are working in other countries, like you mentioned, China, that are working for us. But we don't have to necessarily build a widget factory. We could administer the widget factory. We could provide customer service to the people who use the widgets. Um, right, but the manufacturing itself, I mean, one of the, one of the hardest hit demogra demographics in this country are blue-collar workers, men, white men, to be specific. Right, we got to uh, take a break. Okay. Uh, this is a good time to remind you, Saturday on KFI from 2 to 4, some of the, quote, leaders of the Occupy LA movement are coming to our studios in Burbank to do a show. So tune in for that to hear more of this on KFI Saturday afternoon from 2 to 4. It's a special presentation where, you know, they're in charge. And again, the joke is, well, they leave. We don't know. <laughs> All right, Terry or Elmer has the news. Good show. John Cobell. Can you hear me? No. no. I can hear me, but I can't hear you. you oh, you turned off the mic? No. Oh, no, I thought you just got your batteries replaced. Yeah, John and Ken show, KFI AM 640 more. There we go. Radio at Occupy LA in downtown LA. John shifting a foot or two. <laughs> it's just it's hit and miss where the microphones are working. Today. I guess it was just a dead spot there. Uh, we'll be on Channel 5 in a couple of minutes to talk to Mike Ullman about why we're here today at Occupy LA. This is our first visit here. We've been here since 3 o'clock. We've been talking to callers this hour at 1 800 520 1534 since they've had some of them hours to listen to our interactions with the Occupy people. We have Casey on the line. Casey, you're on with John and Ken. Hi. Okay. I am 26, and I would be laughing at some of the stuff I've heard, but it's, these people are supposed to be representing my generation, and I am embarrassed. I mean, they sound so childish and inane and uninformed, and they're just regurgitating everything they'd ever heard. And I'm grateful that you can articulate for them some kind of a, a purpose of some kind. We're, we're trying to translate. Value. We're a conduit. Well, yeah, I, you know, I think everybody agrees that there is corporate greed, and it did get out of control there during the mortgage run-up. I mean, wouldn't you even agree with that? Well, they're lucky to have you there to translate for them, but if these people are supposed to be my peers, I, I, I just reject that. I mean, I, I had to work so hard to have the things that I am, and I am grateful for it. I've well, been unemployed. You know, I read something interesting today. There was a psychologist who wrote a column that uh, your generation, and not you specifically, but your generation, and maybe some of the people that identify with the Occupy movement, people in their 20s, feel a sense of despair that they're not going to have the life that their parents have, and they're really angry over it. Do you have any of that feeling? Casey, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. They also have a huge sense of entitlement as well that goes along with that. And personally, I don't put myself up to the same standards as my parents because things have definitely changed. That's and great. No, that gives you a good perspective because what the guy was saying is exactly what you just described. It is a feeling of entitlement because when you grow up in a country like ours, which is plentiful, especially if you live in a family that has pretty good means, you become accustomed to and expect the same things, if not better, for you when you grow up. And he was saying they're now looking around and realizing their standard of living, a lot of them, won't be what their parents was, and they're, they're not feeling good about it. But you have a good attitude because you're like, well, I don't, I don't have that sense of entitlement. Yeah, I, I, you know, I understand. I, I really do understand why the caller, why some of the callers listen to this and they just flip. It makes them crazy. We're really talking about two different worlds. I well, mean, there, yeah. there, are, there are people 
who are going to get up and find a way to make a good living no matter what. They've got the drive. They've got the intelligence. They've got uh, a personality, and they're going to make it. And they don't understand people standing in a, in a park all day and, and talking well, in vague generalizations. I mean, that that is two different species of human. No, and I think in our audience, too, where we, you and I were never part of groupthink and we're not yeah. joiners. Individual responsibility, no feeling that anything's handed to you. you got to work for whatever it is you want. Is probably more dominant in listeners like ours. But I think the people we talk to here, they have a stronger sense that people need to come together as a group and as a community and as a country to affect change. Whereas a lot of people in our audience are like, you know, this I mean, country gives you the freedom to do what the hell yeah, you want I mean, and make of it what you want. If I, if I was in their place, I wouldn't be standing in the park. You know, I'd, 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 I'd be going, I'd be finding some work somehow. Yeah. Uh, even if I'm, uh, you know, delivering newspapers or mowing lawns, I'm going to get up in the morning and do something. Every morning you get up and do something leads to something else. You've never had day. a feeling that the system is fixed and it's against the common guy. That's kind well, of how of course the system is fixed against the common guy. That the one That's a given. Who rule things. Uh, the one percent do rule things. Fix all the rules in their they, favor. They are corrupt. They are greedy. And they, but you they, can still yeah. have but a successful life around that. You, you, you only get 70 or 80 years on the planet. What are get, you going to do? Get yourself in the next 8% or 20%. <laughs> Let's start, well, I want to talk to this woman for a minute. I promised I'd put her on. We've got, right, about, got a minute. about a minute. Yeah, what, what, uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Rita Mario Renzi. Rita, you came down just because you wanted to talk on the air. So what do you want to say? Well, I just want to say that there's a big difference be between being poor and being poor-minded. Uh, poor-minded, uh, you make a lot of poor choices that may get you in the position of a truly poor person, but it, you have to take personal responsibility for that. Uh, I mean, wh where is anyone taking responsibility for their own behavior and their own success that they need to make for themselves? You know, I don't, I don't well, that know. is lacking with this group, I will tell you. I, I don't. You don't hear the words that came out of your mouth or the, our last caller who says, you know, you got to get up in the morning, you got to find something to do, you got to work. It's yeah. your responsibility. There's there's no there's nobody's going to bail you out. If I just may respond real quickly yeah. to a person you interviewed earlier regarding uh, all the illegal Hispanics that are here, for example. I mean, in California alone, they've taken 6 billion dollars in welfare alone. That doesn't include crime and all the other money. No one's arguing about that here. Doesn't okay. make sense. All right, what do we got now? About 30 seconds, I think. About 30 seconds. Then we'll be on with Channel 5 and uh, Michael Oman. Yeah, you did get into it with a couple of uh, people here in the park. It was almost like the first topic out of the box, which I wondered, maybe they knew who was coming. Oh, I, I think some of, the, some of those people, yeah, had recognized us from uh, recent controversies. Oh. And, uh, you know, there was one guy, one older guy who was, who was, I don't know if he's still around, he was yelling at me, calling me a Nazi. And then I said, you know, my dad was captured by the Nazis. He goes, what? I said my dad was captured by the Nazis. He turned it on. And he kind of, he kind of faded away into the crowd. <laughs> you know. I've got to drive it home with KFI AM 640's John and Ken live on KFI and live on location at Occupy Los Angeles, downtown City Hall. Guys, a, a term we often use with youngsters, sensory overload. Are you getting any of that out there tonight? Uh, yeah, let me tell you, there has been a persistent aroma for all three and a half hours here. Let's just and say that even though we don't have medical marijuana prescriptions, we certainly qualified today. <laughs> John says that his sore shoulder even feels better yeah. from standing here for yeah. four hours. It's kind of a miracle drug. But, you, know, you know, but some of the conditions, honestly, that were described in other cities, not as bad here, I don't see. We didn't see a lot of excrement, vomit. There are certain smells in the air, but I've seen worse in other places. You know what? I, I've realized that if you do a TV story that you know runs, what, a minute 15 seconds typically, a minute 30 seconds, yeah. you could make any story you want out of this group. There's over 500 people here, or at least over 500 tents. If you want to find five people who make absolutely no sense and portray these people as lunatics, you can do that. You will. If you want to find five people who will talk philosophically about... Wall Street and greed and corporate influence on, on, on politicians in Washington, you could do that too. If you want to find five people who are just mired in a marijuana haze <laughs> and are just here for the community, you could do that. There are, there are, there's, some of this land is apparently sovereign land, we're told. I mean, there are a few cuckoos who have put uh, little demarcations on the ground, and if you step on their land, they tell you to get off because it's sovereign. I don't know who it belongs to. Now you got so moved you, to the freedom of speech zone once. Too. I was were... ordered to the freedom of speech zone because I had uh, infiltrated right. the sovereign land. Yeah, so there are strange rules that exist here, too, but John's right. I mean, it's not a sense. Maybe there are people that are in charge that have this general assembly-type government, but the feeling here pretty much is, hey, you want to join, you can join. 
So therefore, you have hundreds of different personalities. Yeah, it's it's. You know it's, that appears though to be part of the problem here. I mean, Occupy Wall Street has surpassed Tea Party uh, in search traffic according to Google, but there's no cohesion. They're all over the place, and the age-old political adage, "Stay on message." It, it, are you getting a sense that they're staying on message well, or are you getting a hundred messages depending on who you talk we're, to? We're getting a hundred messages. You know, the Tea Party was organized by conservative Americans who were angry at the Republican Party for betraying them. And, and, they, infiltra and they infiltrated the Republican Party and they had specific issues, you know, like uh, you know, excessive debt and government spending and the health care bill from Obama. This this is an entirely different animal. There's no comparison. Through social media and regular media, it is attracting people who just feel a certain vibe that speaks to them. And you've heard the uh, update from Oakland that Mayor Kwan has now done a complete 180. There's some concerns about how she's managed this. She's allowed the protesters back into Ogawa Square up there in Oakland. In talking with the people here and in perhaps talking with city leaders, if you've run into them down there, uh, what's the conversation like going forward with Occupy LA? There's a sense that leaders don't want them there ad infinitum. Uh, what's the plan? Is there a plan? Is there going to be a clash like we saw in Oakland? Well, we talked to City Councilman Dennis Zine earlier in the show, and he pretty much agreed what the mayor put out last night. This cannot go on indefinitely. But before we understand, the idea will be to move them to a place where they're not destroying the lawn like here at City Hall, which we were told was once very beautiful. We don't know. It's pretty dead now. I, I get the sense here, at least from some of the people, that they might be willing to move if they found a decent enough spot for there, them to continue on with their activity. We didn't find a lot of defiance in, no. in, in the small sample size that we spoke to this afternoon. And I think I, uh, Mayor Villaragosa is going to look at what happened in Oakland and decide, I don't want to end up like that mayor you know, because big city mayors are largely Democrat. A lot of them are left-leaning. They were sympathetic to this movement. And that woman, she got pilloried in the media left and right today, and that's probably why she did the 180. Mayors, mayors are damned either way, because let's say that the story out of Oakland was true, and what you had was there was one sexual assault, there was, there was one beating going on. A mayor doesn't know when the tipping point hits and all hell breaks loose. And you don't want to be a mayor when a riot breaks out, when you got early warning signs the night before that things were getting violent and crazy. So the mayor sends in the cops because she thinks that's the right thing to do. Now, whenever you have a clash between cops and civilians who resist, there's bad things that are going to happen. You're going to have people getting hurt. You're going to have uh, uh, violence. I, I don't know how you get around that when you're a mayor. That's just, that's just your lot in life. You're going to get criticized yeah. severely by either side, no matter what decision you make. All right, well, the conversation will continue. John and Ken on location uh, at Occupy LA. We'll talk to you again tomorrow in studio. Thanks. All right, see you then. All right, that's a nightly simulcast with KTLA News and anchor Mike Ullman. All right, we'll be back with a final wrap-up. Now it's dark. Now the good stuff happens, right, John? That's right. Let's go into the tents and it's, see what's going it's on. It's almost there. Halloween. Right. The Johnny Ken Show, <laughs> KFI, AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. Uh, tomorrow, I can't read it. Oh, tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, I can't read it now. Johnny Ken Show, John Cobell and uh, Ken Shampo. Well, uh, we've, walked, day. we've walked back across the street where we started. We're going to say goodbye to Occupy LA. Got time for one more call well, I here. I we'd come back tomorrow. No, it's going to take till tomorrow. I thought you'd stay overnight. I you could really give people the full experience. I've got a real buzz going on. Hey, Sarah, you're on the air. What Hi. do you think of this today? I think you guys are awesome. First of all, you're making me crack up. Um, but I am a. I have a sad story and then a point. My sad story is I was self-employed for ten years as a contractor. I got underbid by illegals. I couldn't keep up with them and their prices because I had too much overhead. I operated within the law. Took a job um, now that I have that pays two thirds less. Had to move out of my house, get a renter in my house, and so that's my sad story. I do believe in corporations, but lobbyists and labor unions have to be capped and regulated in order to bring corporations, woo them back to the United States, to bring out factories. When I drive truck and go to pick up my load, I go to a warehouse filled with boxes. Those boxes came from containers from overseas. I don't see any factories in the United States. And those jobs, um, they were paying $35 an hour to assemble parts. Now, I don't think that that's right. You know, I would take the job assembling parts for $17 an hour. I wouldn't take, you know, I would think it would be corrupt if I was making 35 doing some menial job like that. But that's the labor union doing that. Yeah, no, you got